Good morning, afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back once again to the GLL Master Spring. My name is Blue, joining me here once again is Stokes, and we are very excited to be bringing you the second half of the European Finals. Stokes, how you feel about today? Man, I am feeling so very good. We had so much action yesterday, and it was just such a good time. But before we get into talking about that, guys, we got the weekend overview for you. You guys can see we had all of the regions play yesterday. We had APAC South play a little bit earlier on today. Still have all of the matches to go through for Europe and then North America, rounding it out. Absolutely. So one final day of action rolling in here. And now you can take a look, of course, at our schedule. You can also see who's been winning some of our games. It's going to give you a little hint to what our scoreboard looks like in a second here. But obviously, eight games have already been played out. We've got a couple clear winners on the board there, but we've got eight more to play before we conclude the action today and crown a winner. It'll be the same thing for our North American circuit in a couple hours time when we broadcast that later on today also. So Take a look at the point system that we're working with today, in case anyone is curious, as well as our prize pool. $100,000 is up for grabs across all of the regions competing here. 30,000 specifically available for Europe. That means a $15,000 prize pool is available for whoever takes first here today. 7K for second, 4K for third, and going down from there. Point system on the right, as you can see, one point per kill. First place gets 12 points, nine points, seven points. No, rattles down the list from there. You guys can read it. And there you go. So we'll see how that affects this scoreboard and actually a good conversation to be had about this because look at Nessie. Look at our friends all the way up there at the top of the scoreboard. Look at them. Look at how they sit. Fantastic. 51 placement points, 37 kills. That's going to make a total of 88 points leading the charge right now inside of Europe, followed up by Gambit Esports as well as Avangard. Gambit Esports having an amazing showing yesterday, uh, but just could not edge out Nessie who just simply had them inside of placements. Nessie just placing consistently higher, and that's why you're seeing them up at the top of that leaderboard. Some other interesting story pieces there. You can see Alliance uh, struggling a little bit to make the impact that they thought they were going to be able to do at the beginning of this final. Still sitting down there at seventh place. Certainly not out of the running considering the number of games we have left to play, but they're going to have to be consistent as heck inside of those games, assuming that our top pack is going to also continue to pick up the frags, as well as the placements inside of these last eight games. It's been incredibly close between Gambit specifically and quite a few other teams. If you were following the action yesterday, Gambit tying with, I think, two other teams throughout the day, like three different times and nearly losing the lead, only finally to do so on that last game or so to Nessie. So Nessie's lead currently con in control of the team, but or currently in control for the team, but unfortunately not assured as it's only a seven point advantage over Gambit. They could very easily lose that with a bad game and with one of our top dog teams like Avantgarde Gambit or NCD, even CMK uh, stepping up there to make up the difference. Yeah, all within striking distance. It really just depends on what Gambit Esports is able to produce today. But that's our scoreboard as of right now, folks. You guys can see for the rest of it. I mean, the lower half, a, a couple of just sleepers that we were expecting to do a little bit better. I think the, the big standout for us in particular is probably Solo Q Goats. We had a lot of fun commentating them yesterday, but they just could not simply get the ball rolling. Yeah, Disco Boys as well had some notable results inside of the semifinals. They picked up like an 18 or a 19 kill game, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, so I was hoping to see a little bit more out of them in yesterday's games, but unfortunately, never a good opportunity being presented to them over the course of those eight games. So we'll see if they can change it up. CMK, they're also a pretty interesting addition, having themselves the one standout win that they were able to leverage over the course of yesterday's games and have been keeping up relatively consistent placements aside from that in order to stay close to the top of the packs. So they could also be... A little bit of a uh, silent striker here looking to possibly steal that position on the leaderboard if they can show up with another win today. That's enough talk about the leaderboard itself. It's time to get ready for that first game, ladies and gentlemen, as I think we should only be a couple minutes away from starting it now. Our ninth match, the first of today, first of many, of course, is we're going to round out those final eight to get ourselves a champion to play the 16th. Yeah, a lot of fun to be had today, and I'm looking forward to it, honestly, especially after yesterday and what we saw from a lot of these teams. Yeah, it started off early for Gambit Esports, but that soon translated into a lot of matches with so much action. We had third impact, third partying a lot yesterday, also with that a very aggressive start inside of Epicenter. I feel like as of right now, especially with how everything went yesterday, that today is anybody's game. It really is who comes out the gates flying. 
Uh, not only that too, but who's able to capitalize on positioning correctly here too. That seemed to be a pretty major theme in yesterday's games. That's how Gambit was able to control so many of their matches. And while not necessarily winning all of them, of course, still able to get very, very high placements in a large majority of those games was because of the fact that they were taking control early and utilizing that for pretty much the entirety of the match in order to uh, exert control over their opponents. And as you guys saw on the scoreboard, they're picking up quite a few kills in the process. Still fall throwing a little bit in a couple of the clutches, like a couple of the top three fights where they're unfortunately not able to make the effort needed in order to get the actual uh, win at the end of the day, and they end up getting beaten out by another team. But still, they're constantly keeping themselves in the front of that pack, and that's why they've always been one of our top contenders. Currently number two, of course, uh, as Nessie has been having a barnstorming couple of games, specifically towards the end of yesterday. Uh, but they, to me, are still probably the more consistent team currently in the running. Yeah, and if memory if memory serves me correctly, uh, especially based off the circles that we were getting yesterday, we had a, a lot of favorable circles for the left-hand side of the map, especially down to that leftern side. Uh, and we saw Nessie continue to end up dropping at a Lava Fisher, and it was working out extremely well for them, especially given the circumstances like we talked about with the circle. But a lot of those circles that's tended to pull to the right-hand side of the map, that's where we saw Gambit start to shine. So I want to see if this continues to be something that we see uh, trend into today or if it's going to be a big change up here but we're on board with Nessie to start match one of day two here folks let's see how it goes for him well, let's get into it folks matey graceful and jmw that's the roster playing for Nessie here today if you're new to apex or just new to the region looking to catch up on things this is who's been dominating the games as of yet here and currently holds our first place position out of the first half of games they're looking of course to keep that up they're going to be dropping right over here towards the Lava Fisher and Countdown area in order to start out their first game of the day. Same landing position, I believe, that they were utilizing yesterday. It's not going to see any change up immediately in that department. We'll see if anybody else is going to try and encroach on another team's territory. But for the most part, teams have been pretty respectful of that we only have one direct challenging fight right at the start. The real you know, point to keep your eyes on it that the early game here, though, is going to be Skyhook. And apparently late game, it's going to be the place you want to keep your eyes on as well as the circle seems to be centralizing right around that area as well as Trials and Countdown. Well, 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 do we have some stuff to talk about then? Because Skyhook was, uh, well, Skyhook was basically one big just war zone yesterday. There's no other way to really put it. Like there was just battles going on left and right and people trying to get as many KPs as they possibly can. And there was something that we talked about uh, pretty often yesterday when it came to Skyhook and just when ha what happens when it gets overpopulated, right? Especially with the amount of buildings that are in Skyhook, it's very likely that we're going to end up with quite a few teams just straight up on top of each other and they're going to have to try and figure this you know close quarters combat out and we'll have to see who ends up coming out on top of that but this is going to be a pretty strong circle for Nessie and a lot of these teams up to this left hand side we've had quite a few fights go down at trials but again it's mostly just been centralized around the skyhook area yeah, I mean, m almost every single game, the first fight that's happened has almost always happened in this area. So it's very, a very, very hotly contested zone for pretty much this entire tournament so far. Zippeth from the uh, solo queue goat's going to be keeping an eye on it in the meanwhile here, while the rest of his team is quickly working on looting out the remaining uh, inside of Trials down below him there, more than likely also routing through those small facilities behind Trials, behind the player we're currently looking at there on the bottom right of the screen. Uh, before they potentially get ready to jump into another fight. We do have a squad rolling in pretty quickly here. It's going to be Dippity's squad as uh, T-Rex works their way in towards Skyhook here. Possibly to start some trouble in a few moments. They're moving very fast to take control of this far building on the inside of it. They're going to get a couple shots. I believe that's from the player on the cliff side. Well, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, and hopefully it's a new T-Rex because yesterday it was not the best showing from them, although we were hoping for better. An amazing showing inside of the semifinals, but very quiet yesterday, all except for those last two matches where we finally saw them get their win, but definitely need to see some more KPs today and just some overall better placement. That was the thing that was seriously plaguing them yesterday, uh, you know, apart from the kills not really pouring in how they exactly wanted them to. Uh, either way, though, looks like uh, Skyhook going to be the main focal point as of right now. Yeah, Skyhook definitely going to be the battleground for a lot of these teams. And like we already talked about, the circle will be drifting in that general direction here for at least the first two waves. So that is going to open up a lot of cover and a lot of potential fighting grounds here for teams to play with. We're actually going to see Nessie take some heat from Kick early on as well. We'll still have to be cautious of T-Rex and 
Let's talk a little bit more about T-Rex while we're waiting for this Nessie fight to get started here. T-Rex, obviously a bit of a slow start. They were starting to pick things up a little bit towards the end of yesterday's games, though. So possibly just a bit of a slower start for them in that first quarter of the games. And maybe we'll see something better for them. This will be a great test right here if they try to get themselves involved in the action whatsoever. Kick is being held back on their aggression right now. That's a breath of fresh air for Nessie, thankfully. As due to that extra pressure, Kick is not able to keep up the heat on Nessie. And they're giving... Plenty of time, more than enough, of course, to recover and get themselves ready for the re-aggression, whatever it should show up. And Kick, another one of our teams that just has not been having the greatest of showings, currently 19th place on our leaderboard. So need to try and get something going on inside of, you know, match number one here today. And again, try and get something going for this squad. But now we're on board with Major Pushers, which is a squad we didn't get to see all too much from yesterday either. So excited to see how they can possibly get things started here. It looks to be aggressive off rip as Major Pushers and more specifically Ranch is actually oh. pushing forward directly into his foe and can't get away. The Arc Star is already out. He's not able to get back into his teleporter and NCD chasing them down. It's Dolphin as he gets down, but his Gibraltar is going to hop right through the portal. But no, Gibraltar has been downed as well. This is looking to be some frags here for Major Pushers if this doesn't go unchecked. But Nags, he's going to have to pop back through the portal and try and get his Gibraltar back up. That Wraith uh -oh. getting pretty much instantly denied upon entry right there, but they're going to be able to try and recover a little bit. Here comes Avangard, though, also moving in to cause some serious trouble in the midst of this fight. Another Arcs are going to muck up the work slightly, but it won't stop them as they're still able to clean out Eggs and Badoli, the last remaining members of that squad. I believe wiping them out entirely, netting them those extra KPs for Avangard. As they take control of the facility, that's going to be NCD going down. Major pushers, of course, also faltering inside of that fight. Well, Avangard with an amazing play right there. there. There's obviously not really a chance for them when it comes down to that. Uh, you know, hop back through the portal, try and get your friend up. But right when you get him up, he's going to have about 20 HP and he needs to not only shield, but probably med. So, I mean, it's more than dude, likely going to be, you know, just the useless friend there for a moment, right? Like, you, you can't really get yeah. in that gunfight. That fight was unfortunately like a non starter right from the beginning. As soon as that yeah. Wraith got immediately stuck with the Arc Star, and she was just dead from the beginning of that fight, unfortunately. <sighs> so, a little unlucky at the end of the day. Really good Arc Star placement oh. from, uh, from her opponents. Now, already getting into another fight. Some trouble for Nessie here as Mady's recently gone down, but greeted as well. So, that's going to be the full elimination going against that player. Full of possibility to try and turn this around into two VX, but it seems that the player who took out Mady has already retreated. So, no real chance of a trade. They're going to have to sit back here, try to get their health back up as quickly as possible and hope that they can recover in the next fight when the re-engagement comes in. Yeah, another issue right now is it seems like Kick is not the only people Ooh. here. And yeah, it looks like new esports are on top of the building as well as Denzage absolutely Terrible. annihilates post-kill. Goodbye, my friend. I have to see you later on if your friends are able to try and get your tag. But... That's uh, down the road as Denze re-engages down low, but immediately hops into the midsection of the building where you're able to eliminate that target earlier on. But an EMP might be the sign of danger to come, but it doesn't seem like anyone wants to hop to just yet. So they're not the case. Uh, teams do have control of a building here for kicks. They're not going to be under any immediate threat. More importantly, they're safe for the second wave of the circle too. So not under any uh, threat for probably the foreseeable future here to be forced to move out of this position, just trying to defend what they currently have. Of course, if there's anything to be scavenged, grab it real quick here, but focus up because as we've been seeing, there's a lot of fights building up very quickly on the inside of Skyhook here. You don't necessarily have all the time you need to breathe in between these fights as you're seeing air getting cleaned up there by third impact because they already have control of the building across the way. They're going to take that KP with them here, reassert the high ground from their own building and get ready to possibly jump back in I guess the rest of Air's squad in a second, if the opportunity is going to present itself. Yeah, and this is what we were talking about when it comes to Skyhook and how this tends to go with a lot of squads, is just that it's going to be a lot of building fights. You have to try and hold onto that ground as long as possible. And, and for quite a few of these squads, it's going to work out for their comp, especially from what we were seeing earlier on. Uh, with that uh, Crypto being on, I believe TI, but it could be one of the previous squads. But either way, well, definitely yeah. going to assist and... Uh, 
in the regard of being able to hold on to a building and things like that. You're just going to have really good intel as to what's going on outside, as well as your ability to EMP anyone on the entry. So to make things a little bit easier, but as soon as we jump back on board with Third Impact, they're in yet another engagement, and just as is just making it look too easy right now on this Bloodhound. Back and forth in between <laughs> the Gibraltar shield, but the Octane's a little bit quicker. They finally end up getting the last frag, and they'll get Jazaz back up before they grab the rest of these death boxes. Jazaz getting the uh, one two punch thrown right back at him there. Unfortunately, as he misses, his opponent will take him down with the same move there. Obviously, going to be able to recover that pretty quickly. We're going to shift over towards another fight here. TI still under a lot of pressure as the defensive bombardment is going to go down. New esports and ethics have recently been wiped out. I think ethics, the squad we just saw get eliminated in that last fight. TI's trying to fight here. Avant Guard's causing some trouble from over there at the top of Skyhook. That charge rifle doing some serious damage as a couple players trying to, of course, see if they can get lucky and get it down here, or more importantly, get those extra points needed for the Evo Shields to get reds this early on so that they are ready when this entire facility is going to break down and turn it into uh, chaos should the circle push anyone to the outside of it. As well as on that team tracker, NCD, our fourth place team, currently knocked out as well. So some solid points here for anyone and hopefully some solid points for kick as Denze is trying to do the jig right now on this uh -huh. row, but it's not working out. He can't get away even with the extra movement speed from Octane. Solo Q Goats, very strong right now. Able to get Diff back up and that might assist in the situation if they're able to get him shielded as well. But it looks like they've created some space. So they'll be able to hold on to this midsection inside of the building as of right now. Just gatekeep on the staircases and make it to where this team can't pressure them uh, until they're exactly ready for it. So they'll be able to get everyone shielded back up as T-Rex needs to get on top of these meds as well. T-Rex still in the fight after having been here for such a long time. One of the first teams to rotate into this position, although not originally dropping here because of the circle being in place. And obviously that has netted them quite a large advantage here as they've been able to survive quite nicely. I'm not sure if they've been able to scavenge any KPs, though, from the, all the other teams rotating in. From the player we were looking at, at least, didn't see anything on that HUD, so we'll have to check back in a little bit and see if that's going to be improving as the play continues here. OCN going to suffer from some serious pressure. They'll lose their Gibby. The Revenant falls directly after that. All going to go to the Octane here now. Donche trying to bring out the clutch and you know, down at least one player, but underrated. Still coming in for the cleanup here. Oh, the triple take as well to try and finish it off. And the job is done. Great stuff from Case Swinney there on underrated as they clean up another squad and get another three KPs for their trouble. Underrated, we're more than likely not exactly expecting a Revenant mirror match there as we haven't been seeing that much Revenant. But I have to say, from what we saw yesterday with Underrated, this team comp just works for their play style. They're extremely aggressive, they want to get in your face, and they constantly are using that death totem on cooldown in order to do so. And the, the beauty of it is the fact that they're able to get at people so quickly, whether it be transitioning up the side of a building with Horizon and her grab lift, or, you know, using that jump pad with Octane or just using his speed in general. It's just a really amazing comp that they have and what they've been able to do with it so far. Got a Lions holding the far extremity of the city there at the top left, and they're not going to be the only ones. Avant Guard still in the position on top of Trials. This was originally held by the Solo Q Goats, but they've gotten a lot more aggressive and have decided to jump into the city itself. I believe they're still in play here although mixed up somewhere in that blob of teams on the south side of Skyhook. So looks like they are going to be fighting. Thank you very much. T-Rex at this point in time. They were near them earlier. Just didn't see the names under the T-Rex uh, logos there. So thank you very much, Observer. More than likely going to be engaging upon them at any point in time here. They are very, very close to each other. Nothing else broiling out just as of yet, though. Everybody having a relatively comfortable amount of space to work with. But that is soon going to change, as you can see from our new circle. It is going to isolate out the large majority of the Skyhook facilities, as well as push our players into the open process. Well, this is going to be utter chaos down the line, but it seems like the craziness starts now as Gambit Esports loses Hardecki early on. One of our star players that had an amazing showing yesterday, but as of right now, down on the floor. They'll be able to get him back up and the meds start flowing, but it looks like the push might possibly be coming through from their opponent as the Gibraltar still holding down the staircase. It'll be a thermal grenade to hold off that for the time being, but Gambit not going to be too worried about it as, again, Damaged earlier on, much rather just sit here, med back up, and be prepared to try and take this to Nessie. But this fight right now, so very pivotal 
for both of them. Obviously not wanting to give things up, especially so early on here. Still 14 squads remaining. But as John was talking about before, Skyhook going to transition to the top end of this area. And that makes it to where these buildings are just going to get so very hectic as everyone needs to flood out, empty out, and go to another section of the map. Also, we actually had... Um, uh, Yappers, as well as underrated, on the outside, the lower end of the map, the southern side of the circle, working their way in slowly. So we could have some possible third parties when all of this pops off. CMK now jump into the fray as well, but they'll just hop into the bottom floor of, I believe, Nessie's building to check out these death boxes. Yeah, they're going to be pretty safe in doing that there. Obviously, uh, the folks on Nessie still down only two at this point. They don't want to take any risk on challenging a 2v3, I would imagine, here. So trying to play for positioning over all else. But no, a new squad's going to jump into their building as well via the portal here. They're going to have to try and run away. Who is it going out against them? I believe it's Reply Totem, as they're going to be able to drop Jay Savage there. No reply coming in immediately. Jay Savage more than likely going to get brought back up. But no, it doesn't look like it gets down by another player instead, or finished off, I should say by another player, so that's very unfortunate for Applied Totem. Some bad timing on the push there. They get caught out by CMK, and the player who's down is lost on the retreat. And trying to head back to wherever they were, and sadly, we don't exactly know where they came from, but wherever it was, it was definitely a hot zone, and you can see why they did not want to be there. But as of right now, getting an update on one of these buildings, and yep, this is exactly what we were talking about. You can see this top floor, mid floor, and bottom floor all taken up inside of the same place. And, and the funniest thing about this, the thing that I find so comical, is that usually everyone runs a bloodhound, so everyone's just constantly scanning each other in the same building. And it's like, all right, they're still there. We're, <laughs> we're going to have to leave this place eventually, and when we I'll do... Don't try anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, there it's we like, go. Perfect example right there. Shiv just spamming it from the top corner here, getting the full intel. Yeah, they usually call this the Mexican standoff, right? But I feel like this is more like the Apex standoff, is when everyone's got Bloodhound scans and they're just staring at each other through walls. It's the tower standoff here, is <laughs> everyone's vertically standing off instead of a horizontal one. So. It's the Jenga standoff. That's what yeah, it is. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> We're going to continue to play into that for some time here, too. Probably for at least the next minute and a half while we wait for that circle to close out. Uh, this building's actually safe for the new circle, too, so this explains what why there's that? such a large presence on the inside of it. Uh, Gambit may have to move over here soon, too. And they're not the only ones. Un under underrated also working their way in here. Oh, no. Oh, no. They're actually going to go for the same no building. Way. All right. Well, this building's about to pop off oh. in a second. Someone's going to have to fight, oh. as there is no room left on the first floor. Underrated make the same mistake Reply Totem did. They oh, lose oh, no. not just one, but two, as they're also going to get cut off by Gambit on the way back to the other building. Oh, no. And they will get completely wiped as a result of those mistakes. Uh, like like entering a haunted house that you didn't you just had no clue right <laughs> like, like what is going on here <laughs> starts stuff starts levitating you're like man I was just trying to make a sandwich like, uh, <laughs> like it's that, it's that community gift where like Troy walks in and everything's on fire yeah <laughs> that's exactly what it was and, they were just covering thing... pizza to the party guys why'd you have to do that to him oh man and the saddest thing about that was is like what we were talking about earlier with underrated usually they're using that death totem off of cooldown when they're trying to claim new space or anything like that but that was completely different they thought they'd have at least uh, a pretty you know equal fight when it came down to it if they're able to try and get some control of the bottom floor but that was never the case they instantaneously like on entry lose somebody try to immediately vacate the premises and the problem is is that well this building's neighbors were assisting as well there's like get off my land and started shooting at him like it's it just not good overall underrated not able to get away they're gonna lose their lives pretty early on here especially given uh, how they wanted to finish this off but either way they're now gone and you need to still figure out the uh well the ending to this story that is skyhook as of right now and gambit seemed to want to try and pop things off as of late especially with this kraber Gonna be a shot from Gamma connecting. I believe up to Alliance if they're still holding the same position they were a couple minutes ago up there. Color doesn't match, so pretty sure that's their Gibby who just took a oh hit. Gamma gonna come under some heat though and be forced back inside of the building. But look at this! Nicely done regardless! The quickscope move there on the Kraber following it up with the R301. Hardecki is tearing it up on the top of this building as he nearly single-handedly wipes out that squad. That solo queue goats going down primarily to him, as well as some assists coming into the other members of Gambit, and I believe other players in the distance as well. They're very beautifully played by Gambit. Great aggression to move over and take control of this already incredibly contested building. 
This is amazing so far from Gambit and Hardecki with this Kraber not missing these shots. So very consistent as of right now. And just remember, every single time he hits the shot, that's a down or it's somebody losing a shield and he does it again as he cracks one behind the desk in the mid level. So easy right now for Hardecki as he's making mincemeat of all of his opponents. He's gonna hop back in with the Kraber. It doesn't oh, no, even this. matter, even though he's gonna lose a little. HP tries to go for the hip fire, but he's still got two friends upstairs in for the assist. And that might be the scariest thing about it. Is it feels like Hardecki against the world, but there's still two other people that could join at any moment in time. Yeah, they just now had to call on Leogri to help out on that fight there. Uh, Artico obviously watching out for the rope as well as anyone else trying to jump onto the building and third party them as this is a pretty aggressive move from Gambit. But it seems like they're going to take a step back here, play a little bit more cautiously as now they realize they might be over pushing or more importantly, over exerting their mats a little bit too early on. Remember, we're only down to the top eight. There's still going to be another two to three fights they'll have to probably reckon with before they get to the end of this game. And they'll absolutely want grenade support for that one. A lot was being used in order to put pressure onto the teams below them, but it is enough in order to get them roof control. The problem is the roof isn't entirely safe. As you're seeing, they're still taking a lot of chip damage as a result of playing into that position. Third impact, finally getting into some heat here as well. Not for the same building, though. Still playing into a slightly different position, Ooh. trying to fend off aggressors. There's a lot of good intel coming in from that incendiary on the ground, as well as the damage on top of it here, too. Zaz waiting for the push to come in, but their opponent oh not willing to commit to it at this point. Now it's two separate squads sitting down below. Another incendiary goes out. Unfortunately, the curve isn't going to work into his favor. They're not going the way he would have liked to, but an EMP comes out as well. Things continue to get crazier and crazier on the inside of this potential fight. On the outside of the facility, also going to see, I believe that was CMK just getting wiped out right there by GYD. And now they're moving into the open. They've got to be very careful though. Obviously they don't have a guard, TI, and a whole bunch of other squads are in this area. This could be the final fight right here. Oh, this has got to be it, John. Only four squads remaining, and you saw that scan. You saw it. Ten plus hostiles inside of this area. You can't just make that up, and you can see how much damage the circle's doing as well. Third impact now gone. GYD with amazing positioning on this building, eliminating crypto drones as well as as many people as they can possibly lay their eyes on. Alliance also doing the same. They're more than likely going to get in a gunfight here with GYD at a moment's notice. Notice, but still, mostly the focal point being on this building and the positioning of the other two squads inside of it. But as soon as we get the update, this is actually settled inside of this building. Only three squads remaining, and Dippities and the boys actually make it out of that battle. And what a battle it was as it continued to go back and forth for what seemed to be, uh, well, about half of this match. But Finally, we're down to the final three. Let's see how this breaks. This is going to be all up to utility, what they have at their disposal, especially when it comes to this next circle. They're going to have to try and do the dash, and that's the scariest part about this is very minimal cover. Have to worry about that Gibraltar shield and what you can do with it. Once again, Alliance with fantastic positioning and still have that Gibby to use on that entry. Yeah, this is the benefit of Alliance staying outside of the chaos that's been going on in Skyhook. Now, of course, probably not going to be a whole lot of KPs that have been given to Alliance if they got any whatsoever over the course of this match. But they've been hanging out on this cliffside for pretty much the entire game ever since they rotated to this part a little bit earlier on in the matchup. And now they get to thrive from it because this position, probably the most powerful one out of the three they have here. They've got to try to get some KPs on the inside of this fight, though, because like I said, they're sitting a little bit light on that right now here. GYD already taking the pressure from our third squad across the way. Oski specifically here, trying to dodge out that Arc Star, but is unable to do so. Throwing down the bubble shield in the process to try and allow him to rebattery up real quick while making sure that Alliance aren't getting too greedy in order to finish him off. It's T-Rex that's on the other side of the field in the meantime, trying to make impact, trying to get their own first win after they came so close in the second wave and the second half of games that were played out yesterday. Here comes the move out now, though. It's rough for T-Rex. They're going to get wiped out there. And now it comes down to Alliance versus our last remaining squad. Alliance will make the push forward as they've already got one down, and they're going to look to clean this up as quickly as they can. Almost no damage onto them. It's an easy win as Alliance take the first game of the day. As well as the kill lead. So uh, apparently they were able to find some KPs just coming through in those kills that we did not exactly get to see earlier on. But either way, Alliance with amazing management of the circle are able to bait out every single one of those squads out into open space and just superior firepower and positioning winning them out that situation. Fantastic stuff from Alliance and definitely a start to the day that they were looking for in day two in comparison to day one.
Uh, ratings for that one are going to be quite interesting, like I said, because Alliance was relatively out of the fight until the very end. They're looking to secure the win, so they're definitely going to get those 12 points, obviously. But beyond that, it is going to be a question of what they were able to pick up, as we had a lot of other squads on the inside. Think like T-Rex, for example, there, who is camping on the inside of that big uh, big building, you know, the, the one we were talking about that had like three to four squads in it for the entirety of waves three through like six at the end of the game right there. So good possibility for T-Rex, Third Impact, any of these teams that were sitting in the inside of that area to have mopped up a lot of kills in the process and possibly more points overall than Alliance was able to get outside of that overall game with their first place placement coming in there. And we're just taking a look here at the crazy highlights. Gambit as well. If I had to guess Gambit possibly topping out our KPs for that game right there just because of what we were seeing, the aggressive boost from them working out so well for specifically hard decky. Unfortunately, unable to maintain that on the rotate outside of this building, but they made some serious waves on that push. Yeah, especially that tower that you were talking about. It, it, you know what it felt like to me? It felt like when you're playing like Mortal Kombat and you have to play like a survival tower or something like that. Like that's yeah. exactly what it felt like is just like test your might. That's all you got. Like you, you're gonna be fighting everyone inside of this building if you step foot inside of it. But that wasn't even the, the brunt of what was going on. It truly was the story of Alliance and how they were able to work this circle later on with Skyhook because we saw the amount of fights going on in that area, not only inside of that building, John, but across paths as well as underrated having that very very unfortunate uh, moment as well all right ladies and gentlemen that's gonna do it for our first game of the day and our ninth match overall in the series match number 10 is gonna be coming up right after this short break so stick with us for more Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, once again. Already a great start to the day here in our European Finals for the GLL Masters. Stokes is with me on the cast, of course. Alliance finally taking a victory that they were looking for all of yesterday, but unfortunately we're having a lot of trouble acquiring, but they get it here quite handily, in fact, as the circle favors them quite heavily in game number nine there. Allows them to show up on the outskirts of Skyhook and come in on the final circle to clean things up. So as you'll see, they actually do end up topping out. Oh no, they got 10 kills. I don't even know what I was talking about at the end of that game then. I thought they were like way over at the Northwest side and they weren't gonna be able to get anything, but apparently I was dead wrong as they ended up topping out both categories inside of that game. Yeah, we saw one of them end up with a kill lead there right at the end. So the other two uh, more than likely just having two kills uh, apart from that because he ended up having six. But either way, Alliance topping the leaderboard there. So let's see how that's going to affect our overall leaderboard, shall we? Nessie's still in the lead, even though they ended up suffering a 10th place loss there. Uh, Gamut Esports still, wow, very close inside of second. Avangard within striking distance as well. Alliance as well as CMK. I mean, this is just looking so very close right now. Yeah, I mean, Avangard constantly keeping up here, not always able to get the consistent placements. To be fair, they're relatively close to a lot of the other teams in the pack, but definitely trailing behind Gambit and Nessie. But the real difference maker, you can see there, almost a plus 10 advantage on kills between Avangard and Alliance, Gambit, and Nessie. And it gets even worse as you go down the ratings from that point forward. So Avangard clearly just cleaning up in the kill department right now. No one's even close to challenging them in that respect. And that's allowing them to stay very, very close to some of our other top contenders right now on that leaderboard. Yeah, absolutely. But that's that's the biggest thing, right? Is like looking at Nessie once again, it hasn't been the kills for them. It has been that constant high placement mm -hmm. that they have been able to secure. But that obviously changing inside of our first map where we ran into a lot of issues for them given Skyhook. It looked like the rotation came in a little bit too early on and they were punished because of that. So we'll see if things can possibly prove to be a little better in their future. We're not going to be starting off with them, but do remember they have been landing Lava Fisher. We'll see if that changes up, but more than likely going to stay the same as we hop on board with our previous match winners in Alliance. Yeah, obviously Nessie, you know, kind of kind of dealt a bad rap at the beginning of that game, losing one of their players before the first circle had even really closed. So was already working on the back foot for that entirety of that game. I still able to manage, I think, like a top 10 finish. So all things considered, they did pretty well there, considering that they were pretty much a non-starter in terms of combat terms for the rest of that game. They're only able to scavenge what they might have been able to get uh, just off of third parties or whether, the, you know, a lucky pick or something like that from range there. So still able to make it work and considering the worst of circumstances that they were dealing with. And we'll now have to see if they are going to be able to recover a little bit as they'll jump into this next one. Circle gonna be way different. We're heading down to the southeast part of the map there. Geyser seems to be the pivotal point of interest that that circle will be enclosing towards. Uh, of course, no guarantee that it's actually gonna go to Geyser as of yet. It just seems to be drifting in that general direction and we'll follow it up as we get further into the game. That is going to remain the case. So actually not a lot of teams over there either. So more than likely gonna see a mad dash in that general direction. You can already see Clone Squad starting to work their way down. Currently Clone just looting it out of the zone, but Kana 
as well as their third teammate more than likely also going to collide pretty quickly in that part of the map. Well, when we were working LATAM, it seemed like we could not get away from the geyser circles. But this, uh, well, so far through all the matches that we've had for EU, we've only had, I believe, a singular one. This is going to be our second one breaking down this way. And the thing about geyser is just how congested it does get here. Yes, we did talk about Skyhook and obviously how teams can be on top of each other with that. But when it comes to geyser, we're going to see a lot of these squads rotating in very early on here to try and get building control because it matters so much to how things end up breaking inside of geyser i mean there's just very minimal cover so when it comes to actually getting into this canyon uh, you're going to run into a lot of issues if you're not one of the first squads there like going to be the case very limited amounts of coverage to work with as you can see quite a few buildings to play to the inside of but keep in mind those buildings are limited in the number of them overall and teams are definitely going to gatekeep the larger portions of those buildings if they're going to get the opportunity to set up early, as we're seeing now for Clone and some of these other teams that are in this area of the map earlier on. We'll take some time for, for the other teams to arrive. Right now, Clone and the rest of his team going to have full control over this partition of the map, but it's more than likely going to become a pivotal battleground at some point later on. There's two of them grouping up and just continuing to loot up. Aside from that, not a whole lot going on across the map here right now. GYD did jump into a little bit of heat here, as we can see recovery for Yuki and Gnoski, but already falling away, it seems, from that engagement, which I believe might have been going on a little bit more towards the north of them, as they are trying to route down over here into Geyser now as well, the looks of it. Yeah, it looks like they were able to escape Fragment East and get out of that theater of battle, but either way, more than likely going to be entering another one extremely soon, especially from what we've been talking about inside of Geyser. But uh, from what we were looking at earlier on, that's actually going to be the squad of a croissant that will be inside of Geyser first. So they'll have first pick of the buildings, more than likely going to go for that uh, closer side from the camera angle that we ended up having. That big building usually going to be the main one that people want control of. Either way, Hopping on board now with major pushers is they have not had a fantastic start to the day, and that's going to, uh, well, partner with not the greatest showing from yesterday. So need to try and get something going on here for them. Maybe possibly starting things off inside of the kill department. We don't necessarily know, but we're looking for them to find some success. Although, looks like Dolphin. The rest of the squad here starting to get in a possible engagement as they move up the hill. But as soon as I say that, it actually looks like he's just regathering with his squad. And, uh, well, looks to be another squad actually in tow directly behind them, but just taking another path through this uh, area. This is going to be the big push towards Geyser right here that we're seeing with all these teams moving in that general direction. Most notably, one just going through the archway there. I believe they're going to meet Contestion, however, at the same time as they come upon another squad in the process of trying to go through that divide. Uh, Rex Forever's team ends up making the correct choice to root around as they're going to have a much easier time getting into positions. But here we go. It's NCD that's jumping close to another squad as they do move in, take that initial control towards Geyser, as well as a building on the inside of it, too. They'll have something to work with here now. Um, more, more importantly, a very defendable position to be able to play off of should the squad that was close to them a couple seconds ago decide to follow. But it's not looking like that's going to be the case. They're sitting pretty safe in their own bunker just across the way. Yeah, and uh, that squad rotating in, Rex Forever squad, that's major pushers that are on the uh, inbound train as of right now. But NCD looking to get aggressive outside. Might have a possible KP here on one of the new eSports members. But they'll just get the down as of right now. And oh, it looks to be robbed from the opposing squad. Not able to get it done. But oh no, some pretty poor positioning here. But looks like the teleporter might be able to save some lives. But oh no, our first squad eliminated. And don't exactly know who that was just yet. Not able to see the kill feed either. So unfortunate for... Hey, there we go. Uh, well, new oh no, it's new esports. Very unfortunate for them. Yeah, so new esports going to go out in the last place inside of this game. Unfortunately, they get caught in the midst of the rotate trying to work their way to the inside of Geyser itself there. Just couldn't really find any position to work with. A similar fate that quite a few of our teams in the last game suffered when they tried to take that one building at the edge of Skyhook as well. We saw at least two teams get wiped due to that misrotate and as well as a lack of info in terms of what was going on inside of the POI. So... Outside of that, things are going to be a little bit more quiet here. Obviously, teams are taking pot shots at each other. A few nades getting chopped out here by Hard Deck. He's kind of feeling himself now for that last game here. But the problem is, he is going to attract the ire of his opponent sitting up on that cliffside. Takes a small amount of damage, but of course, has no trouble falling back. Guarding the door to quickly revive that with a shield cell. So no big issues there for him. 
and the rest of Gambit as of yet. But yeah, uh, <laughs> everyone has moved over here towards the inside of Geyser, like we predicted. There is actually a fight, it looks like, going on towards Skyhook between Kick as well as Solo Q Goats also. Now, this is a bit dangerous. These guys stick here for too long. They're not only going to be out of the mix for the circle because it's closing in on them right now. You guys can see that on the right side. Uh, but if they continue to stay here and continue to poke at each other, obviously that damage is going to get worse. They're going to need to spend more and more time rotating over. And by the time they get to where the circle will eventually be, there obviously won't be a lot of cover to work with. And they'll be suffering from the same issue that we just saw new esports die to. Yeah, this looks to be a cross-country road trip for both of these guys. Get your families in the car, because we've got a long road ahead of us. So, looks like they're not going to want to take that engagement anymore. Is uh, They're going to leave Skyhook, and you can't exactly blame them. It's just a very long run from here, and most of this is going to be inside of the circle. Granted, they more than likely have the meds to be able to do so, and that's exactly why they're doing this in the first place, is... Well, as obviously that first circle just not dealing a lot of damage. So good news for Solo Q Ghosts is they'll be one of the last squads into the geyser area. We'll see if they'll be able to third party on any possible battles that are going on onto the outskirts. But that will do for that as they don't even have a squad within striking distance of them at all. In fact, there are a handful still around. We can still see the pink squad airs team. That's actually going to be ethics up to the right hand side over here for near Overlook, uh, as well as another squad hanging out still inside a Fragment. We've got Alliance trying to creep their way in. The uh, the circle hold strategy that they were utilizing in the last game worked out really well for them, so I think they're also going to try to play on that. Uh, I mean, this is like almost the same exact situation that we had at Skyhook in the last game here. you got a couple squads on the outside. They're going to try to pick shots every now and again when they can get them with long-range guns, and then you've got this giant mass of players <laughs> sitting on the inside of another POI, which in this case is going to be Geyser. So Alliance... Uh, a very similar strategy that they had in the last game here, but they were also waiting on the outskirts of that fight and then looking to clean up, hopefully, once the large majority of those teams had been wiped out. I'm not sure if it's going to pan out as well this time, however, just considering the fact that there's a lot more natural cover for these teams to utilize inside of geysers. The fights won't naturally progress as quickly as Alliance might think they will, and that could lead to some problems that they're forced into it before it's been cleared out enough. T-Rex, meanwhile, is going to get in a small scuffle, I believe, over here in Sorting Facility. They take a couple of pot shots at a team across the way. Nothing serious being connected as of yet. But they do seem ready to dive deeper into this fight or at minimum try and force their opponents out of the zone. Well, T-Rex don't exactly have a bead on the positioning of this other squad. As we up on board with major pushers, which I do believe are on the, the other. receiving end of yeah. this. But uh, neither of them really having any read on this information uh, or on the situation as of right now. Obviously, both having the bloodhounds, so you must be going to scan at any moment in time. But the big issue as of right now is, well, they obviously have to try and deal with any squads that could possibly rotate and try and get these frags, especially with their positioning uh, on that cliff. Could definitely happen at a moment's notice, but shouldn't have too much to worry about, especially with uh, now underrated joining the party as they're holding down this vehicle. And it looks like they're receiving shots from both directions as well. K Swinney getting on top of that shield. But uh, yeah, well, to have underrated can possibly play this out. They obviously still have that death code. I mean, here we go, folks. This is what we talked about with this squad. They really, really like using this on the entry with not only that gravity lift from the horizon, but also that jump pad from the Octane as they try to get into Totem's face. But Totem, with a very quick reply, able to take down quite a few of those insured bodies. White Totem with a good lock at the moment onto that other squad across the way here. No additional rotation points either for that squad, so they're going to have to go back into the circle if they want to try and wrap in a different direction. And they certainly can do that. If this isn't a Reply Totem on the other side of the fight right now, then it is going to be open for them to wrap around towards the south and up north again in order to work their way into Geyser. But no, it's underrated. Oh, so look unfortunately, at that, John. What's up? They're, they're, they're switching out the helmet so he's able oh, to yeah, get yeah. ult faster and they're using ult accelerants to possibly to like constantly get his ult up so they can continue to engage. It's actually insane. I think we saw, I think there was a there was a clip from one of our other regions uh, earlier this week where like someone was holding like like 12 of those or something like that in their inventory. Oh, so they could like, it might not have been in this, it might have been somewhere else, but like, <laughs> yeah, 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 it was here, wasn't it? Uh, so that they could do these crazy pushes specifically with that, with the death totem. So oh, not an uncommon God. thing. We've definitely seen that with, uh, to an even extremer extent.
So oh, wasn't it oh, it was the same goal. Oh, that's right, it was the semifinal. Now I'm remembering it. Yeah, it was. I was watching the semifinal and I saw it happen. So this is Horizon doing it from underrated once again, as that's they're going to try to build up that old as quickly as possible. I mean, it's just so cool because because we, well, we've talked about this already, right? The usual lineup you see inside of competitive Apex is the Wraith, Gibraltar, Bloodhound. But you can try anything, and it's really up to your play style as to what you want to do. We see Caustic played. We were seeing a lot of Octane because his jump pad's so very aggressive. And now we're starting to see some Revenant gameplay come in. We saw a little bit inside of Latim. We were working that as well. Nothing as successful as Underrated. But uh, I, I definitely think that Underrated uh, have possibly done the best with a comp like this that I've personally seen. And it's just really, really entertaining to watch because of that death totem and the way that they can handle these situations. And I just love how they're especially utilizing those ultimate accelerants. But we'll have to see if that can possibly accelerate them into this top 10. We've only still lost one squad, folks, as uh, things have tended to slow down and sure up, really, from our previous match. Just, well, things were really, really popping off when it came to Skyhook. But this geyser hold, as John was talking about before, these battles just not progressing how they once did. Aggressive boost from Kick, but they're going to get caught off by Nessie here as Mady gets some serious damage on one of the members of Kick while they go for that jump pad move. Good news is going to be able to make it very far away from Nessie as a result of that jump pad, so not going to have to really worry about them beyond that. Alliance is in the process of wrapping. Uh, Reply Totem should be somewhere around here unless they've also made a major move as of late here, but the circle has not forced that out of them just yet, so we'll see. As they're going to get closer and closer. I believe that is the Totem Boys sitting right in front of us here in that next building. You can't say the totem boys because it makes me think that it's underrated. You know, I'm just I'm just constantly <laughs> waiting for that. Oh yeah, that's, that'll get a bit confusing, <laughs> won't it? Another fight oh. brewing here on the north side. Also, as we're gonna head into that towards the tunnel into Geyser itself, Ethics trying to get aggressive but paying the price for it there. Cray, as well as Air, nearly losing their lives on the initial engagement. The scan comes out to allow them in. We are going to see the pool come out from the enemy's horizon. However, holding them back temporarily. Thankfully, doesn't end up. Push them back in a major way, but Yoko finally gonna be able to make a push up to the top rafters. Your problem is get stuck by an arc star, has to retreat downstairs. Craig gonna be lost entirely. Air and Yoko oh. not sitting in too good of straights, but they are able to recover, taking out the rest of GY Do, who is on the other end of this fight. Nicely done by Ethics. Their great recovery was looking very dodgy the entire time, and they get it done regardless. Oh, it's right when we hop on board with T-Rex. They're in a fight of their own, and it looks like they'll actually sweep this up pretty pretty easily, but that's actually going to be changing up very quickly as well as immediately Kearney has to use his ult to try and create some space here. Able to break a shield, but immediately peeks out. Some arc stars flying in as well as it's avant-garde on the entry. Oh my, Blushka doing some work with the Eva. Able to down yet another one, deals some solid damage, rotates around the building, but immediately drops off the rock face instead. Wants to get back on top of these shields, but Plushka now in some heat as well as sitting currently on the entry of Geyser, but you can see the sheer amount of squads trying to work this area. Underrated also third party now is T-Rex still have some members around the area. Zer uh, Zerfer, or Ziffer, excuse me, currently working their way up the side of the building, uh, but just trying to play out their life. They don't exactly have teammates next to them, and they want to try and hold on to as much health as possible, but that's a whole different story here for Solar <laughs> Look, Look at the amount of information that Shiv just got off of a singular scan. The amount of deaths and movement and everything else going on up top but oh no solo q goats might possibly have the drop on underrated here but horizon looks to be no covered. prepared gonna try and play this out here gamma get a little bit of fire back at them as they're trying to get a third party out of this situation or an extra kp if they can steal it for themselves but as we're seeing the solo q goats no cover to work with there it's why underrated still trying to get the drop on them from up on top no going down yet from what I can see, but the solo queue goats having a lot of problems surviving in this open field. Alliance now potentially coming in to try and third party this as well as Gambit. These still have underrated somewhere in the mix as well, assuming that they were not pushed out of the fight a couple seconds ago. This tiny little tube is all they have for cover to work with. And unfortunately, Gambit has full sight lines onto oh. that. Nice work there with the wingman as Hardecki's going to be able to down out Diff. I believe that will be the end of the solo queue goats. That was the last player standing, so they will go out in a sub top 10 finish.
Hey, it's just so difficult to see squads try and uh, fight for space inside of Geyser because it's just so difficult to try and fight these teams that are inside of the buildings. They constantly have cover, as you said. You have these blue containers to work with, but even with Gibraltar shields, it doesn't seem like you're going to be able to get away from anything, especially when you have a soft, buttery, flaky bread on the other side. Croissant currently doing a lot of damage. Clone already has a broken shield, but the rest of his team really putting in work right now. Arcstar is in, trying to deal some damage to Robin, but he'll make it away. Doesn't have to deal with that shield break, but they're going to end up losing Kana in the process, who will end up going down. Not dusted just yet, but they're really clambering for space in the moment as they're trying to get around these boxes, but all oh, third impact is looking too dangerous, but more specifically Balan as of right now. And the only one clean up here, that's going to be some KPs as third impact, as you said, losing two members. It's going to be all up to Balan to try and hold on for placement. Yeah, Balan getting a good job there with the cleanup against the squad sitting in the corner. Same problem as solo Q goats is unfortunately for Croissant, just literally no room to work with there. Trying to hide behind a pillbox and quite obviously not working out due to the flank position from Balan, but they have to pay a price for that. Balan abandons his teammates in order to be able to pick that up, and the remaining two are pushed out a couple seconds later, meaning that Balan is now alone, almost certainly not going to be able to get a recovery onto those banners and absolutely not going to be able to res them considering the small amount of space still let. Reply Totem finally routing their way towards the inside of the facility here. I believe still chasing down Alliance if that's them down below. Could be another squad of course. We've got a lot of them in the mix here but we have now reached our top 10. Getting down to the wire here is only a few squads are going to remain. All Totem with the high ground right now and well we've all heard that one before and we'll see if it works out well. As soon as we jump on board with Alliance, they're in a lot of trouble as well. In fact, it's all down to the singular member, Hakus, as he's trying to get as many KPs as he can with his Spitfire. But that magazine, well, it's empty now. Need to try and get some more bullets inside, but can't do so. It's going to be the third party from behind as Totem come off of the high horse and into the fray, dealing so much damage with the wingman Savage right up on top of things. They're forcing it straight up into the building with the Eva to down the Bloodhound and continue to try and control this space, but it's yet another third party coming in. Who is this inside the door? It's ACD, and they've got shotguns. It's the breach inside. Get rid of the octane. They've taken control, and that's just kills flying back and forth through all, all of that battle. It's insane that somebody actually came out on top of that, but still things going on around this canyon as Gambit, as well as NCD, go back and forth, but finally Gambit Whoa, fall as well. Ethics making it out and into the top four squads. Ethics with a beautiful 1v1 clutch. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to allow him to go any further. Actually, no, you can still see a win right here. Balance alone, remember, but he has upgraded himself over towards Red Shield oh. now. The problem is he's going to take a lot of pressure from that defensive bombardment coming in from Cray, who's still now the last player alive on the inside of that tube for Ethics. Never mind, they get air back into it. He's going to be in the fight now also as they re rebound onto their Bloodhound. The down goes on to air once again here. Balance still causing no. problems, but no, NCD comes in for the cleanup again and is going to take out both of those squads. Ethics, as well as the last remaining member of Balan's team, goes down. And just like that, we're in the top two. NCD looking for the cleanup. They're going to get it, as they are the last remaining squad out of the chaos that is that geyser fight. Oh my, how the things end inside of Geyser. That was some insane stuff across the board for those last four, five minutes. It seemed endless, just constant battles back and forth, but that's what we all play Apex for, right? Just so much fun right there. And uh, coming down to it, John, a 1v1v1. V3. That was not expected, I don't think. Uh, we haven't seen one of those just yet inside of EU, and that made for a lot of fun, but congratulations to NCD on that one, because to make it out, and not only make it out, but also have all three of your members still alive, uh, that's something special. I mean, NCD was so aggressive as well on the tail end of so many of these fights. I mean, we could see it right from the start here. They were getting into a lot of action. Ethics as well, really some credit to them there, had a massive game for themselves. Uh, unfortunate what happened with the split of their players to cause the elimination of two out of three of them, but regardless, making it really deep into that bracket run as well, that's going to be some serious points going up onto the board for them. But NCT, just a constant threat on the inside of guys are never once faltering. Gambit doing the same for quite a bit there too, as we saw they were getting 
gatekeeping a lot of the rotations coming in from the west side of the map and more than likely cleaned up a couple of teams in the process. Everybody was getting a piece of the pie as we see third impact getting the opportunity to move in, knock out this squad. That was Croissant getting pinched right there also. Just not a lot of teams with really any room to work with. So, so many just getting completely wiped with no capability to defend themselves, but NCD being the team that thrives upon it so, so often as we see wipe it out two out of three of the remaining squads and undefeated was the last one in it as we got a quick little glimpse from the third person POV there. K Swinney, that last straggler. So many of those, as Stokes had mentioned, as we had three single member squads waiting at the end of that game. They're trying to take on NCD. None of them could do the job, of course. NCD take the W out of that game. We're going to take a short break, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, we'll have the scores from that game. And of course, we'll be getting ready to drop in once again with match number 11. Already a quarter of the way through today's matches, and we are ready for more, ladies and gentlemen. Just finishing off that 10th game, and what an exciting one it was. Pretty much an endless chain of combat there on the inside of Geyser. We kind of knew it was going to happen. We had a powder keg lined up there from all those squads getting grouped up, trying to get that early circle positioning, but still, what a blast it was to cast. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get those scores up on the board, see where exactly our teams are positioned now as we get ready to head into game number 11 here at the European Finals. NCD obviously topping things out there as they take first place, nine kills along with it. No real huge leader in the kill department there, but we definitely have some front runners. Ethics also picking up eight kills in the process of that one. Seven points for placement and second place overall in the matchup there with 15 points total. Yeah, and you can just see how difficult it was for a lot of these squads on the entry into Geyser to actually pick up these frags, especially for underrated, as they tried to work their way in and ended up losing two of their members. Oh. Not really able to get it done. But oh, Gambit Esports finally catching up to Nessie. They haven't had the greatest start to today, but obviously only two matches out of the eight played. So still have a shot to try and reclaim first. But as of right now, Gambit leading by four points. Yeah, so many of our top dogs there, unfortunately, failing to make an impact because they got either got caught on the rotate towards guys or were, I, were unable to play aggressively. And as a result of that, got eliminated without much in the way of either placement points or KPs in that game. I'm sure you guys saw from the last screen there. So uh, because Gambit was one of the few standouts in that respect, Gambit able to work their way in and retake the lead, which they lost to Nessie at the end of yesterday, but have now very cautiously gotten back for themselves here at 99 to 95 in the point totals overall there. I mean, just another five points behind as well now is Avantgarde at 90 and addition. I mean, look at this, just a five point mm -hmm. spread as we continue to work our way down here. NCD the same as they've overtaken Alliance. who are now down in fifth at 80 points here. This is an incredibly close race right now. If we see that top pack falter again and Alliance has a good game, we could very easily see an immediate shift from them from fifth to first place. So this is really any of those teams' games, even outside the top five there. If we see a good matchup from any of those teams, we could have another contender added to that list also. Well, the good news is, folks, is that the, well, the story news, match 11 already up and going is We'll be on board with NCD. You expect it. We're always going to be on board with our victors to start off. But as you said it, any way you slice it, this could be anybody's game still for this finals. All the way down to what seemingly is like seventh place. If somebody has an amazing game and they're able to get first, that's what well, relatively speaking about 24, 25 points if they're able to pop off inside of the kills as well. So, I mean, th there's really anything that oh, can go out or go down right now. And speaking of anything, Kick currently in an engagement and they already got a bolt, which is going <laughs> to make it extremely easy for them. As it looks like their opponents just have pistols. So some early KPs for Kick. Kick, it's going to make it a lot easier. And oh no, it's going to be the solo queue goats as well. Yep, solo queue goats losing everybody except for Diff here. Diff pretty much has to run. He does not have a choice inside of this situation. Still a 1v3, has an RE45 to play off of, not even a secondary. I doubt he has cells to heal up these two missing uh, these two missing oh. 25 partitions as well. And no, he's been caught. Has to try and make it into this tunnel and get out of here. There's a good chance the kick might not follow him if he continues to race out of here and is able to make it out of this zone at a minimum. But it is a race indeed for him to survive. The good news is he's got Octane. So if anyone was going to be able to make it out of this situation, it would be him. As long as there's no Octane on the other team, which I don't think there is, he should be able to outpace them pretty easily. Uh, it should be relatively straightforward as that is indeed the fastest moving character inside of this whole game. Good luck catching the man with titanium legs. Uh, I I've never tried it personally speaking, but I've heard it's pretty difficult. So, uh, <laughs> 
Either way, it uh, looks like we're going to be getting another geyser circle here, Blue. And, uh, well, if that powder keg that you were talking about from before uh, popped off in well, amazing fashion, this one probably going to do the same as we're going to see that mad dash once again from these squads to try and claim space. But as we were talking about before with Croissant, this is where they usually end up dropping. So we're expecting them to do pretty well uh, off rip here trying to deal with these squads. But we didn't even see them in, I believe, like the top 10 the last time. I think that they got knocked out pretty early on and we just were not able to see exactly uh, what became of them. But either way, it looks like as of right now, things are going to be breaking in extremely similar fashion as uh, I do believe that's GYD taking control of the uh, tunnel once again. See if they're going to be able to continue to hold on to that. They did get overwhelmed on a team rotating into them the last time. I think it was Ethics that was able to mm -hmm. knock them out via that aggressive push they made. Uh, so good stuff from Ethics specifically, who, like we said, had a really good game in terms of overall impact. Haven't really seen too many of those out of ethics just as of yet. So definitely going to give them some very much needed points onto the board here. T-Rex over in the train yard in the meanwhile, dealing with some issues here. They've got quite a bit of fireback coming in from a squad across the way. They're going to get aggressive upon that, though, as they were able to do some serious damage to Sir, Sir DCE. Uh, Bolit over there across the way. And you can see Zerifer quite literally right next to this person trying desperately to hunt that player down. But the support going to come in from Donche and the rest of the squad also there. Donche going to get down, however, by Zerifer, who's continuing to make this aggressive run forward and honestly might just thrive upon this. His opponents don't have either the shields or the gun power to fend off against this. So very beautifully done. T-Rex just run that squad over nice and easy. Yeah, an easy face roll and some KPs in the back pocket for T-Rex as they're looking a lot more like the beast that they're optimally named today as opposed to yesterday where it seemed like they had been declawed and defanged. Nothing really happening for them all except for those last two matches. And today, uh, really standing out as a testament to what these people can actually do. And honestly, I'm here for it. We need some more active groups here getting a lot of these frags, especially on these entries. But uh, as soon as I say that, that. And speaking of entries, NCD making their entry into Geyser. And it looks like they're already ready for a possible fight. They want to try and get building control. We talked about how important that is in the grand scheme of how this is going to play out. And NCD, no stranger to this either. Already seeing a few fights broil out for oh. control over Geyser. And in fact, might be seeing a little bit of pressure coming in over towards Adoli and the rest of their squad as they continue to hold they were able to make it out of the building they were contesting initially where Rex and some of the other members of this squad were continuing to put pressure onto Nags and the rest of his team. Well, but, okay, oh. hold on. Wait, 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 wait. We oh, got a new no. element getting out of this. Yappers suddenly swing it in from the backside. They're going to detect that initial squad on the inside of this play. Also, not looking like they're going to contest it. Just going to be a little mean as they'll take out their door, <laughs> removing some of the security that they currently have, and as well, <laughs> taking control of a new building. That's exactly what I was going to talk about as well. Is That's actually going to be major pushers inside of the other building as well. And, and that was the funny thing is like both of the squads show up and they're like, oh, major pushers are inside this building. We need to deal with them. And then they're like, oh, wait a minute. These other buildings are empty. We should just go to these. So <laughs> they were just the way the to leave. Like, uh, have you ever seen the Dane Cook skit where he talks about B&E's? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's not baking and eggs. It's, uh, you know, breaking an end or uh, you know, either way, either way. It's literally <laughs> just about kicking indoors. That's what it's about. Like, he, okay. <laughs> he soon realizes that he didn't want to actually do a B and E. He just wanted to kick in some doors. And he literally, like, kicks in their closet door as well just for fun because he was like, I just had so much adrenaline. I just kicked in the closet door, too. So, you know, it, that's exactly what that felt like right there. It's just like, hey, you know, no breaking and entering. We just wanted to kick your door in and leave. So. <laughs> Well, new esports is going to be able to take control early here as well. Not necessarily with the most mats to play off of those you've seen. They've already gone for a couple shield swaps here as they've got their higher health shields sitting on the ground. But the problem is CMK directly under them. So they can't necessarily go out and scavenge at the current point in time here. They have to get ready for the next fight if CMK decides to put the pressure onto them. Currently, they're uh, thinking about it. Not really sure if they want to try and play for this or not. Maybe their options about them, as it does look like they call for a general retreat of those two other players as they're going to rotate them around outside. But no one really seeming to have the appetite in order to play into this here. So it's Ron Sonia and uh, W... Gr w or, oh, excuse me, hard to pronounce that name. W, I'm just going to call him, uh, having to fall back and play this a little bit more passively, waiting for some of the aggression to possibly come in from new esports instead. I think his name is Rugby, maybe? I'm, I'm I think that actually is it. Yeah, it's, uh, it was throwing me off because I was trying to read it like phonetically. 
that's that's the problem with gamer tags in the first place Every, everyone's just trying to be a little too gamer especially nowadays man we got so many x's flying around through people's names it reminds me of xbox in like 2008 it's actually insane either way though looks like new esports are starting to come under fire and well actually no fodder being thrown at them instead they're simply going to pop their doors open uh hail some shots but none of them actually going to land and jump right back inside as we noticed the last time uh when you know obviously blue was talking about that powder keg this thing has a very very long fuse and it doesn't tend to pop off until it's already overloaded so we'll see if that actually ends up happening again or this is going to trend to more of an aggressive uh well we want to take your building away type of gameplay not really going to know though as uh well we still have a lot of rotation still to go through still on the first ring and 19 squads still remaining after that earlier elimination that we saw and yeah, new esports continuing to hold on in this position obviously they've had time to recover their shields uh since they're not dealing with any of the immediate pressure from cmk anymore we're going to be free to explore their building a little bit also as we're going to take a peek here at Gambit, who are also working on rotating their way up to Geyser from the Sorting facility down to the south here. Seems like they're dealing with another team across the way, though. This is the same position where we saw Reply Totem and Alliance skirmish in the last game. So for anybody who remembers that, we uh, are going to see another battle transpire in that same position. Speaking of Alliance, they are currently dealing with some pressure from Underrated as we switch over towards them. The death protection coming out for two of their players. Hey, Swinney still out on the field with that active, but is also going to get wiped relatively quickly as well. Uh, pretty far away from it, unfortunately, so not going to have the immediate capability to re-jump onto Alliance. There also, of course, needs to regen the lost health now. Uh, so Alliance is going to get the opportunity to rebound themselves. Does not look like uh, Alliance are necessarily immediately re-aggressing onto Underrated just because they have a very advantageous high ground position against them and would have to swing up that rope in order to start the fight. But either way, both teams are going to seemingly back away from that and just respect each other for the time being. So the very unfortunate saga of solo queue oh. goes continuing here to the story uh, continues to get sadder and sadder as Diff has not even been able to fully recover his shield since the last time we checked in with this player and is just hiding in a corner, trying to play for as high of a place as possible at this point, really. And unfortunately, not much else can be done beyond that until the chaos at Geyser begins, and maybe Diff can start sneaking off a couple kills. Yeah, I believe this is the first entry. And if, uh, what, what, do they, what do they call it, John? I think it's uh, called an unexpected journey. I think that's what it's called. And he's got to like, <laughs> yeah. come all the way over to Geyser and, you know, possibly do something with a ring later on down the line. I don't really know. Something like that. But either way, Diff, uh, he's playing the longest game of hide and seek of his entire life. And the, the, the beauty of this game of hide and seek is it involves money. And by money, I mean he needs placement points so unbelievably badly. So Solo Q Goat's going to try and hide Diff for as long as possible obviously does not have the option of getting his friends back so this is just simply going to be him hiding we're not going to see him engage a lot of people because when it comes down to it well in apex it's damn near impossible to 1v3 people especially when they're coordinated uh, it's just a lot of health that you have to deal with as well as every other piece of utility at their disposal but finally getting an update uh, on our friends over on nessie our previous leaders of the scoreboard uh, well, at least at the start of today, but obviously Gambit taking control of that. So they're trying to hope for a better finish here. This is going to be the second time or third time overall that we're going to end up with a geyser circle. And these really haven't been the best benefit for them. I see, of course, dealing with some of the pressure from Alliance across the way. Graceful actually getting a shield crack there momentarily as well. Obviously, plenty of cover to play with. So it's not the end of the day, assuming he has the mats to revive himself, which he should. So, going to be able to get Graceful back up to full HP. Portal as well to make the next transition here since the Alliance pressure is a little bit too much to deal with on an open cross. So they are going to use the uh, the Wraith Portal there in order to get themselves across the next divide. Kick, taking some top positioning here and actually getting some intel onto another player as well. But the problem is, I think, underestimating the potential pressure against them from this rooftop. Denze very quickly learns that that rooftop is not necessarily a great position to play into right now and has to fall back from it. Going to uh, check the rooftop there or <laughs> the rafters on the top of the room too. Anybody who remembers yesterday, you might know why I might be doing that. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that one as an Easter egg. We don't want to spoil, but I'm sure that clip's oh, around on, you know? somewhere. It, it's, a, it's a pretty good one. We'll definitely tell you to go back, but oh no, Nessie! They're getting ran down by the Death Totem from Underrated, and they chase him through! Oh my god! Dasso, this man's all gas, no breaks. There's not a single break on this guy at all. Leaves off the lines. Oh my. Some amazing stuff from Underrated, as they'll be able to clean up one of our previous leaders and possibly get some more loot. But it seems like they've got somebody on the entry as well. 
That has to be the worst placement so far from Nessie. Dying in 19th place. So unfortunate there. We're going to see underrated pick up. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to see underrated pick up that. And as our observer just pointed out to us, we're probably not done yet as we're going to see more of those accelerants get immediately used by Horizon. He seems oh, to be stacking my. up once more. <laughs> That's the second one we've seen it. used. It's probably not all he's got either here in just a second. They're going to be ready to throw out the totem and make another aggressive play. Already three plus KPs for this team. And they're going to look to try and get more here. Keep in mind. There's only six possible KPs in this game so far. Technically, actually eight if you count the solo queue goat situation, but still. Well, looks like Horizon's getting about a percent every three and seconds here. We go. here. So right when he hits 90, they literally just have to wait about 30 seconds and they're able to, uh, well, aggress on literally anyone. And that they will do. Another black hole down here. And it looks like they have a target as well. The Spitfire eating them alive makes it so damn easy. The Eva now cleaning things up as well. But Horizon will be sent right back to the death totem. That insurance policy surely working out. Wish I could update mine to that as he respawns immediately back and jumps immediately back into the fray as well. Kick flying out of their shield. Denze more in particular is will actually end up leaving his friends. Horizon and Dazzle will deal with that situation accordingly, but it's more Horizon than anything, as apparently T-Rex is in on this as well, but they're down on the other side of the canyon, so this is still underrated up against our friends over here on kick. Still have that one down. Swinney trying to do his damnedest to help out Dezo, but Horizon very low as well, and trying to get back on top of that health, and now it's all up to K-Swinney doing the mad dash. Some amazing movement right now with the Phoenix Kit as as well, but not going to be able to get it done just yet. Instead, it's going to be the reposition back to the death boxes, back to where that death totem was, and just try to recuperate as much as possible. Really hoping to see Dezo get out of this one alive, but now third impact seems to be here as well. Underrated, the aggressor in this situation, the last to die. Kick has been eliminated, I believe, and on top of that as well, we have also seen the initial squad in the fight. T-Rex, I believe, also gone from the engagement if they weren't able to escape. Third impact now trying to third party, and they may get the job done here. Underrated, still under pressure, but still in the fight at this point in time. They did lose oh. one. We are going to see more aggression work its way out here. Avant-Garde wiping out a squad just a few moments ago, losing Z H in the process, but they do have his beacon, so there's the possibility of recovery at some point later on in the game. The craziest thing as of right now is just let me read you three of these names that are currently knocked out. Epix, T-Rex, and Nessie. That is like practically over a quarter of our, you know, top 10. So as of right now, this is a possible huge shakeup inside of this scoreboard, especially given that Nessie is currently second place. T-Rex more than likely hoping for a big finish here, especially given those circumstances, but it doesn't seem to come for them just yet. Hopping on board now with Alliance is there under some fire. Still have some really strong positioning here, but their Gibraltar shield currently on cooldowns. So they won't be able to utilize that just yet how they want to. Instead, it'll be back to the batteries and try and stay on top of this info, which I began doing a very, very good job of, especially with Beast of the Hunt already online, able to keep track of a lot of their opponents. Looks like Haka is also going to actually get the drop on them. Ends up putting the portal in, cracks the shield as well. So that's more than likely up to Alliance now to get the hop in and get the drop on them. And that's exactly what it's going to be. It's the Gibraltar with the Mastiff, a match made in heaven, if you ask me. Vase with a nice clean up there. Alliance mopping up shop here. Getting some nice kills for them. Gambit going to be in trouble here as they try to make the next cross. They are trying to work their way towards the inside of Geyser before things get a little bit too crazy. But there are so many squads blocking the way. Reply Totem once again taking control of this facility. Not the only one is you got Clones team also sitting just below in the very same building. Things are very, very tense right now. Gambit, though, has found the way out. They've got a portal and a rift down onto the ground there from their wraith. They're going to be able to escape with that. They're also ready to jump into another engagement here, unloading the nades. Unfortunately, the Gibby shield is going to mitigate almost all of that here. But it starts out of more importantly, makes a lot of noise and mass oh. potential push here from Gambit. They're ready for it. Just wait for the shield to go away. Their opponents is going to expire first. They know they have the advantage, although we're going to see a defensive bombardment go down. Their shield is not going to last the entire length of that. They've got to be careful about the way they push forward. Thankfully, this is their own bombardment. I'll move forward here. Not a lot of damage going on to them as a result of it. Hardecki, oh. though, 
trying to recover, but no, takes a little bit too much heat as a result of that. And just like that, CMK coming up on the cliffside, wipes out Gambit and is able to take them down. Reply Totem still in the midst of their fight, also here on the outskirts of where Gambit just rotated from. So the action is going to continue. Gambit not ready for the off angle there, and oh, it's very unfortunate for them. But either way, Reply Totem now in the fray. And oh no, very similar circumstances. Two Gibby Shields down, and Totem trying to fight back. They'll be able to do so as well. It's the Mastiff Gibraltar combo, folks. I'm telling you, especially with that ADS down the sights, having that shield across half your body just makes it so easy inside of those CQC gunfights. Either way, Totem making it away with the bag. There are a lot of KPs going towards them and almost cracking this top 10, but this has just been non-stop action yet again and actually a lot more action than what we had last time on geyser as these teams continue to battle ncd a team that we saw rotated in very early on here uh still sending shots across the way to these other uh groups well underrated once again here we've seen the death totem twice this will be thrice if you are you know keeping up with things either way though they're starting to deal some very solid damage horizon not having that insurance policy any longer so so they're going to have to slow things down for the meanwhile. Underrated, if I'm reading our feed correctly right now, currently working with 10 plus KPs. Oh, oh we're my. only halfway oh. through the game right now. Ooh, this could very easily be a 20 kill game. NCD in the meanwhile here getting aggressive, pushing the envelope forward against their opponent. No. Not gonna make it easy for them though, as we will see them get knocked out more likely for that fight. GYD holding their own. How much time do they have to recover though is the question. They still need to revive that third member and they may not have the time to do so. Major pushers while well, pushing their way in here, trying to wipe out on the third party and they're gonna succeed in taking down GYD. They take capitalization upon that third party, and I believe they're safe for the time being. No one from what I can see immediately, don't, oh, never mind. Here comes oh. Reply Totem. They want a piece of this too. He hit it with the Arc Star Totem on the entry. That's gonna be a huge crack under the shield. They've already downed one. The Bloodhound, there's no way in hell you're getting out of this one. Oh my, Totem very quick to the fight as they heard all of the fire going on inside of this one. Well, seems to have burned out for the time being as Totem take control of the building. And that's gonna mean a lot, especially given the circumstances very close for a lot of these squads right now, practically on top of each other, right around these rocks. Underrated, still with very solid positioning as well, especially given that team comp, once again, they can get extremely aggressive, especially with that Octane pad, as well as Horizon being of great use here with that grab lift, so it can get some pretty fantastic angles uh, when it comes down to having to take these gunfights. But either way, though, looks like we will be getting some information here for CMK from Zon, as uh, he'll be using that crypto drone a little early on here before this next circle. Lots of spots going down, but it seems like they found some friends across the way. Couple jumps here, possibly trying to bait out the Kraber shot. He does not have a lot left here, so Sonya being very careful with the placement of the shot. There you go. Wants to make sure that when these are shot out, they're going to hit. And there you go. Two connections in a row here. Bubble Shield needed to go down, unfortunately. Zeron takes a lot of heat. They have no cover to play with in the natural direction of their opponents currently, so they may actually need to bail for this position. Oh, never mind. Here comes Underrated. They're going to get aggressive, but it's being fended off. Oh, two of their players suddenly down. They, well, this is going to be the end of Underrated. They've been doing so well in the aggression throughout this game. Finally, Possibly meeting their match as they try to get too aggressive, jumping on top of Sonya and the rest of CMK. They're nearly losing their life oh. in the process, and they're going to get bled out by W Grub from the other side of the fight right there. Nicely done. Reply Totem still holding the top position on the cliffside here as well. We're now into a top four position as underrated as finally go down. Yeah. Well, Totem as well as CMK being the sentinel positioning. Anyone that comes into the area is immediately eviscerated and Totem keeping true to the name as well and what we were talking about. That's going to be kill leader for them as well as this is most definitely the best showing we've seen from them in all of these matches and they're looking to take the victory right now. Three squads remaining, but it's three full squads. This is not going to be easy pickings like we saw the last time inside of Geyser. Circle's been of little concern to these teams here because the action has been so non-stop here. Third impact going right up into New Esports' territory. The problem is if they go onto the rooftop, they're going to have all the info. New Esports is going to have all the info onto Third Impact. The same will be returned in kind, but Third Impact cannot push to the top of this structure right now. The third remaining squad up on the cliffside, if they try to be the first to push out here, they're almost certainly going to be the first to die. 
And that is not what they want out of this situation. Want to try and push for second place and obviously the win, if at all possible. Third Impact been quietly moving their way into the top three on the inside of this match. As you can see here, only one kill onto Balan. The, obviously a big difference compared to the last game here where Balan had to survive on his own. To be fair though, Balan in that process wiped out a full squad while solos. That's not to say that this player can't get things done by themselves, but problem's going to be here. They're in an exposed position. Ooh. Savage has the Kraber ready to use that. Gets a great down onto Balan there. Fully takes him out with a single shot. More than likely going to be able to revive, but hold on. Is the view model going to peek out far enough here? Another opportunity, but this one's going to miss from Jay Savage. And that leaves only one remaining shot in the Kraber. Oh, this is just so very scary in the way that this is going to break. Totem definitely with the optimal positioning, but the true piece of this puzzle that we haven't necessarily figured out just yet is what's going to happen with new esports inside of this building. This is the fold that we're all really, really concerned with as of right now. They have to eventually leave this area, and they're more than likely going to either roll into Third Impact or immediately get engaged by Totem. You can see Third Impact trying to find some safe harbor as of right now, some calm waters to work with before this ends up going off. They know everyone is more than likely on full armor and everything else, especially given that there's only nine people remaining. So Third Impact, now prepared, but it looks to be the defensive bombardment coming out. Great Gibraltar shield here and no EMP to get rid of that just yet. Until now, finally pops that shield away and it's going to eliminate half of the shields on third impact as well. And third impact rotating directly under the rock face. They're going to be able to use the top inside. New actually not having to be too concerned with this either. Third the gas impact grenade from seemingly in. taking things over. The gas grenade in as well. New is actually inside as well. Totem simply watching things from up top. New esports, I don't even believe that they're aware they might be able to get this last kill they'll do it new esports walks away with it totem seems so calm inside of the calamity there for just a second but not able to get the damage done to new esports they play that out so perfectly that's the danger unfortunately with letting the circle close up so much there as it did reignite the possibility for the octane gas grenade to just completely control that situation as we saw at the end it goes right and completely encompasses the remaining circle what little there was of it at that point allowed for them to get some great control as well as be the last team to kind of jump into that fight so they had great purview over everything that was going on there no last minute surprises being thrown at them or anything of that kind and they were able to get a nice clean mop up on that but while we do see the victory coming out the real story is what we saw from underrated. We were following them quite a bit. The aggression coming out from them, seemingly unmatched by any other team in that lobby. We'll have to see what exactly it led to on the scoreboard as I believe they got knocked out right around, uh, they actually got knocked out pretty early, like seventh or eighth place, something like that, if I remember correctly. So didn't make it as far in as they wanted to, obviously as they got caught trying to move into Geyser itself. Yeah, completely unwavering inside of that aggression as well. But I believe you can say that all about a lot of these teams, especially Totem as well, as they constantly wanted these building fights, playing things out to a T. But uh, the thing about underrated, especially inside of that engagement that we actually just saw inside of the replays right there, is that we'd only seen them get that aggressive when they had the option of Death Totem. That was the one outlier there being that they did not use the ultimate. They could not go back to their previous location. And that really seemed to be the straw that broke the camera back. They did not have any insurance on that situation, ended up losing it because of that. But either way, it looks like the revenge tour for the bottom of the scoreboard is here. Third impact, new, as well as, uh, well, I can't necessarily pull the last squad from memory right now, but either way, a lot of these squads rebounding in brilliant fashion. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know the deal. That's going to be the end of that most recent match. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we got match number 12, as well as the scores updated for you folks. Stick with us. We'll be right back. The chaos continues, ladies and gentlemen, here at the GLL Spring Masters. My name is Blue. Joining me here on the broadcast is Stokes. We just wound up get, mate, excuse me, came number 11 <laughs> out of 16 here in the semifinal. I got to talk a little, just a tad slower. And now we're getting ready to head into game number 12. Last two games have been incredibly action packed. That's led to some serious shakeups in the rating, as we're about to see here. Reply Totem topping out the charts with 11 kills coming out of that game. Underrated as well there with only four points for placement, but 10 kills puts them in third. New Esports getting second there with 12 placement points. They actually got the W in the game itself, but only six kills. So they get second overall for that game at 18 points. The insane thing about this is that Underrated seemed to be the most aggressive team when it came to KPs, and they still got outfragged by Reply Totem. Let's see how this updates our scoreboard here in Nessie. 
falling down the line, but not very far, although given that they did not get a singular point inside of that last match, Avangard will pass them up for second place, currently at 99 points, well within their right to take first place away from Gambit. Yeah, Nessie's starting to fall off only slightly, however, here still overall keeping up a good performance. To be fair, the circle has been brutal the last mm -hmm. two games here, so you can't really blame some of our top dogs for getting isolated out on the rotations into what has already been a very, very difficult move for so many of our teams, as you've seen over the last two circles. So I bet they're hoping a little bit here that things may start to change up. Uh, Alliance still hanging in there as well, unfortunately falling off a little bit, being overtaken by underrated once again. That's been like the constant story between those two teams. Under Raiden Alliance have been right next to each other on the scoreboard for pretty much this entire tournament, and it is going to be the exact same thing here as they are tied once again in a dead heat for fifth place. And actually, Avangard currently with the most frags as well at 62, and we haven't been able to see too many of their engagements just yet, but still topping that, and uh, that's definitely assisting inside of the placements as well, because their placements haven't necessarily been the best thing for them. It's definitely been those KPs coming through, so we'll see if that uh, continues on throughout the day, but this is making for quite the story here coming into these last handful of matches. Yeah, this is it. Now we're moving into the final couple here. We've only got a few left here, a few left for teams to be able to make impact. As you can see, moving into match number 12. Let's get to it, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be following new esports. The current winners of the champions, whatever your preferred wording is from that previous matchup. And we'll get to see exactly how they will start out this game. And of course, where the rest of our teams are going to land as well. Had a little bit of aggression last time for those who missed it. The solo queue goats getting encroached upon by Kick right from the drop point. And that may force a move from... Uh, from a solo queue goats here as they try to play into this once again. We'll see if they try to take control of the same spot or if they're going to maybe negotiate for something else. More importantly, try to watch out for kick this time as uh, obviously things didn't work out too well when they landed right next to them over in Skyhook. But no, instead going to be a T-Rex finding a player, it seems, from the looks of things here and able to down them as well. DZW getting knocked out by this squad. They're looking for more and they're going to find it here as Diffidies gets the eyes on another target just behind him. Oh, no one able to land shots just yet on deputies either, but finally one connects, but doing a very good job with this repeater as of right now. Has some arc stars to work with as well, but don't believe he has any shield cells or batteries on him, and they're immediately going to get aggressive and crack that shield of the Gibby, continuing to chase him down, and you're not necessarily going to get away from Zerfer here as, well, that's Octane, and well, good luck with that one, as we all know. Running him down, but actually going to get some assistance from their friend. Looks like Zerfer might be in some hot water, but able to, well, back up up and immediately get back out that Eva cracks the other shield as well to assist his teammates. Kearney moving in, will get some help with the Mastiff, or actually, no, excuse me, I was expecting a shotgun there, not at all, it's the triple take instead, which, uh, I mean, if you want to use it in that way, it still does indeed have a spray pattern, so. So T-Rex going to be able to get the first three KPs on the inside of the matchup here, contesting a countdown and making very quick work of their opponent's squad out of that situation. Not necessarily going to be completely safe from the looks of things. Ah, never mind. That's way out of the distance there for Zipeth, I think. So not of any immediate concern. We do have Avant Guard around the corner from them, however, in relatively close proximity. So that could potentially come up in a few moments here. Not to mention, of course, you've got Zran squad sitting right across the way. That's going to be CMK over across the divide here, should they end up colliding. Finally going to get a different circle, and boy, is it going to be awkward. <laughs> As you take a look yeah. there on the north side, that circle goes right in the middle of one of our canyon divides, so more than likely going to force out a rotate from some of our teams later on. You can see third impact as well, working their way up there now to be able to take that early positioning and play into that once again for the late game. Well, third impact, obviously going to be absurdly aware of what is going on with ethics from what we saw yesterday and the constant drops and battles that we saw amongst those two inside of the epicenter as well as refinery area. So we'll see if that happens yet again on the rotation for that circle. But either way, though, we're now on board with CMK is they're currently working their way through this valley, just simply trying to find a way up towards the circle. They're already safe here, so just simply need to take their time, find some more loot, and, well, uh, get on their merry way. But either way, it looks like they have been scanned. We'll have to deal with that as we'll be changing things up immediately. GYD, a squad that we've been seeing quite a few, well, let's just say action-packed engagements from throughout the day as well as yesterday not seemingly slowing down in the slide as they're looking to rebound here and try and find some more kps and just overall a better placement 
GYD getting ready for the potential aggression to swing out around them there as they'll get scanned out by their current opponents, Bloodhound. No immediate aggression or commitment to the fight, though, as they've got a nice little bunker set up for themselves. Even some mats sitting onto the ground. Switch over for a moment, take a look at Avant Guard, who are still in the process of looting for the most part here. Or at least it is the case for Defaus, who's actually kind of off on his lonesome right now, uh, just in front of the minimap anyway. Curious to see where the rest of his teammates are, more importantly. Okay, never mind, they're not too far behind. They're just a couple steps behind him as they were finishing up the loot back there. And this is going to lead them up to the north side of the map, I believe. So could it take them relatively close to the folks on third impact who i believe were also in this area yep in fact oh. right around the corner like i said this is going to be a really awkward circle especially for teams that rotate in late here just because the late late circle is not fully known as yet like rounds five and six and that could obviously lead to more yeah it's going to be working itself over there and that's why we see ti in that position earlier on trying to take that but for squads that try to fight in the open say to the west side of the green circle or the far east side they're gonna have to make some pretty major rotations and that's gonna leave some blaring issues for them later on if they get cut off by those canyons that are still going to be in the midst of that cutoff and you can already see the calamity that we're in the store for when the rotations start to come through. And it seems like things are already beginning to pop off on the north side of Epicenter where the circle is. And Cray taking some shots, but also trading some damage back onto another squad. Either way, though, when it comes to this area, it, as we were talking about previously, it's going to be very difficult for a lot of these squads, especially the ones rotating in late. Uh, and on top of that, uh, especially the ones trying to rotate in through the rail system, using those tunnels is going to be very, very dangerous. Not very much cover in there, all except for the rail cars. So it's just going to get quite congested depending on how many bodies we have inside of that area. But it looks like we have a lot of squads already working their way through Epicenter as uh, well. We saw the squad over at Refinery as well as well. They're trading blows back and forth. Alliance on the move here, trying to get themselves into a good position to work with already inside of the round one circle, of course, so not too much of an issue there. But Looking to work their way forward beyond this and if they can scavenge anything else. As both Vapes and IPN sitting right behind Hawkins now as they move forward. There is going to be new esports a little bit further up the field here. More than likely, Alliance not going to be able to get too much of an engagement onto the squad. Might be able to rip off a couple of shots real quick, but highly doubt they're going to make much of an impact. T-Rex, who we talked about before, getting aggressive in the early round towards Countdown. They were able to take out our first squad in the game. Now going to get aggressed upon themselves as Kearney taking some heat. Ready for it though, and is able to fend off the large majority of this aggression, prevent the outright door push while he loses about half of his shields and it's Kick sitting on the outside here, trying to put the pressure on them from both sides of the current facility. Problem is Kick seems to have a third party throwing shots at them already. Cybek was having some bullets and tracers go his way. Uh, not seeming consistent though, that team doesn't really seem to want too much of it. Kick is going to push to the inside of this full commit to the fight against T-Rex, already downing two of them and none of themselves have been taken out. So that's a nice clean fight being taken by Kick and more importantly won by them. To take them out, of course, they'll have to be ready to immediately refight as there is another squad, Nessie in fact, jumping on to try and third party this engagement and a great start. Already going to be able to down one of the members of Kick. Shouldn't have too much of a problem following this up as they're going to continue to push the envelope forward and they succeed in doing so, Nessie at the fourth party out of that situation after we just saw Kick clean up T-Rex. Yeah, Nessie has to be happy with that, but it seems like they're going to come out on top of this Venn diagram that we saw from the shields inside of there. Either way, though, looks like uh, we'll be able to get away with some more mats, and they'll definitely be happier with this start as opposed to what we've been seeing from their past. Already past that 19th place finish, and they have some KPs, so really no complaints over on that side. Either way, though, Gambit Esports now in some trouble of their own as Hardecki under fodder, but only going to lose a little bit of that shield. Get right back up on top of the cells, get that shield back to full HP, and they'll be good to go. But we're reaching a low point now as that first ring has just hit uh, its mark as we'll be waiting for the second one. Not going to be too many engages, although things have definitely started off strong here as we've already lost five squads before the second ring even starts. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of squads getting bled out. Teams are getting more and more aggressive as we get towards the end of the run in the bracket overall here. Teams know they need to make up the difference in points. Gambit specifically here still fighting for their first place position. So many squads within just a couple points of them. So those couple of extra KPs may mean the difference between first and second place, especially as we get towards the end of the run here in games 15 and 16. You're really going to start to see that more and more, I believe. So teams continuing to get compressed further into this endgame circle. 
over here towards the top of the map. It's starting to look a lot like what we had from Geyser as everyone's vying for early positioning as that continues to be a key element of victory, it seems. Air trying to work his way into it, but you can see his team does not have the best path forward. It's just an open run. Push up onto third impact, but the third impact has a secure bunker to play with. Not to mention the fact that Air Squad could get crunched upon from their flank. They have to keep a consistent watch onto that too. Gambit has a bit of a run themselves though, looking at the refinery on the right side there. They've got to work their way past a lot before they're even close to being safe right now. Yeah, you can honestly what that is is the amount of squads that just don't want to deal with a situation that they know is going on inside of the well, we'll just call it the green section right now, right? And no one wants to rotate in there just for the amount of bodies that are currently inside of that area. So you can't exactly blame them. You can see even in like a straight line right above epicenter as well. There's just so many squads currently trying to fight back and forth and vie for positioning. But as you said, Gambit are eventually going to have to work their way out from this position they do still have some time in order to do so though as we're still a minute out from this next ring move but the thing is is that refinery obviously on the edge of this circle right now as well so this is going to make it oh, quite risky if they want to try and hold on until that circle is right at their backs it looks like we're already going to be having a serious move from krama here and the rest of his squad is cray bearing down on them with the rifle, that defensive bombardment not creating enough space for them as it looks like MPE will lose their shield, but that shield battery coming in with the assist. Keep in mind that Cray is kind of off on his lonesome now due to the la lack of proximity for air since air is still way off in the distance trying to maintain circle control and keep an opportunity open for their team. Alliance just waiting for Nessie to walk by as Mady gets instantly dropped upon trying to make the cross there. The rest of the team pretty far behind as well and that's only going to be one or two players here left over that as far as I can tell here. Alliance cleaning up that second one quite easily as well though they do lose IPN in the process so we'll be full killed also to make sure there's no attempt at a revive. Just has to isolate the third player. Oh. Unfortunate for Nessie's, the positioning just wasn't working out for them here. They got caught while two, all three of them were completely separated. And while there is an opportunity for the last player on Nessie standing to escape and possibly even re-engage right now, yeah, it's not looking like JMW wants the fight. Doesn't have good intel on just how low some of these players might have been. Not to mention the fact that the 1v2 in general is going to be quite dangerous. So JMW is going to fall back here, get the Phoenix kit off, and possibly try to re-engage in a different position. Oh, this is so unfortunate for Nessie right now. We were talking about how the start to this match was just so much better from what we had been seeing. You know, obviously that last match, uh, 19th place, zero kills as well. So that's zero points there. They're going to have some points inside of this one. They'll have at least three KPs, but that's not even enough to close the gap between them and first. They need placement points, and that's something that we've been looking to them for uh, throughout this entire tournament where they've had just fantastic finishes. But that's mostly been with those circles favorite the left hand side and with today changing up in stark contrast to yesterday with how these circles are placed it's getting to be extremely difficult for them to find those same placements underrated now with some heat though as dazzo getting tagged up flying through the air it seems like they've got multiple squads to deal with in this area and one of them being third impact as they'll take down dell from gyd Zaz and the rest of Third Impact here trying to dance around their portals in order to keep themselves in good straights. More importantly, trying to wait out that silence that was thrown on specifically to Jazaz. There's not much Jazaz is going to be able to do while waiting that one out. So just continuing to bounce back and forth between it. Over to Major Pushers. Keep an eye on here. And seeing them try to make some uh -oh. major pushes, no pun intended, but they're going to go for a big one right here. And it seems to be going pretty well. Some serious damage coming out from Ranches. They try to clean things up, and they will succeed in doing so. It's crazy. Yoko, as well as Air Squad, going down out of this match now in 12th position. Some major pushers clean that up and get the three KPs and finally open up a pathway into the circle, hopefully, as well. But they're still going to have to deal with third impact on this route. They're kind of gatekeeping the large majority of teams that are working their way in here right now. As you can see, that orange team, the brighter orange team in the top center is TI, trying to block the way in for quite a few of these squads moving in from the right side of your screen. Well, it looks like we're losing about five squads per circle as of right now, and that's not something that we're used to usually seeing inside of these engagements. But either way, much more high-paced uh, game here amongst these guys, and it's been uh, very dynamic so far. 
New esports with some fantastic positioning now, especially for this triple take, able to get a crack from post kill. We saw New Esports have an amazing showing inside of that last game, especially from this man on our screen currently, who had the clutch gas grenade to be able to secure the win inside of Geyser in that previous matchup. Nessie's still alive, more specifically JMW, as he's doing his damnedest right now to fight for some open space. Looks like a possible res coming through here in a moment, but either way, needs to stay up on top of those medis. And yeah, actually able to get back both of the banners. So Nessie just simply need to try and reassert themselves here and possibly oh, no. find some loot. But oh no, very problematic as they're trying to work their way into the circle. Obviously that plane very loud on the entry and people definitely going to know that some respawns are going on. Not to mention, it's a plane in the sky. So it's, <laughs> it's pretty easy to spot out for quite a few of our players, as we just saw there. But Nessie back into it. As far as I can tell, Mady not getting down in the process of transitioning over towards the next building either. So that more than likely is going to be Nessie back to relatively full strength. It obviously depends on what kind of firepower they're looking at for themselves with the limited loot still remaining onto the ground. But taking a look at this next fight here for Alliance, they're going to be able to down one of the members of Reply Totem, still a lot more fighting to go on here, though, as Vapes has had to fall back. The other members of Alliance also is currently trying to recover on the other end of the portal. Vapes is good to go, though. Needs to move in to assist these teammates. They'll have the bubble ready to drop another 10 seconds. And they're going to need it with the amount of fire currently coming onto them as they try to transition into this next circle. Yeah, other bad news is that they've already used that defensive bombardment, and it seems like these teams are not slowing down anytime soon. Alliance trying to fight back with the G7 right now, but Vapes not able to land any shots. Instead, back up on top of the shields, able to get the crack down as, oh, the engage coming through now for Hackus. Fantastic move up the rope, able to deal so much damage to the Gibby, but now before Gibby's allowed to get back into the shield, so that'll be a full shield for Zippeth. As we'll have solo queue goats inside of this battle, as well, but you can see we also have quite a few squ uh, squads actually inside of our rock face here as well, just simply waiting for any rotations to come through. Taking a look at the teams that have been knocked out, some notable ones going down. GYD, of course, who was contending quite a bit yesterday. Kick, kick as well, we saw getting knocked out relatively early on. T Rex, one of our top contenders in the semifinals, also out of the mix. Other than that, though, the top pack still very much in the fight right now. And every single team, except for Underrated, still has all three players alive also here. Underrated, obviously going to be a little bit more quieter on the inside of this game as a result of losing their third. Can't really go for those aggressive swings anymore here. But Major Pushers can, as they're working their way forward, already have a squad down and nearly taken out. There we go. That's going to be Nags falling last as we see Major Pushers clean up yet another squad. Quite a few KPs going their way here that we've already been able to catch on camera. There's at least five of them secured on the inside of this game. And they'll definitely be looking for more here as they breach into the top 10 relatively soon. And truly incredible from them so far as yesterday was definitely not Major Pusher's day, but today seems to have changed up for them, especially inside of the kill department. Well, just really overall, no real placements or anything uh, boding too well for them. But now, speaking of which, Solo Q goes in a lot of trouble and more than likely a decisive ending to them pretty soon as Alliance bearing down on top of them. And not only that, but zero damage done to Alliance as well. as You've already got a single target downed as well as I believe another. It's all down to a singular member of Solo Q goats who has already lost their shield. Plushka with just superior firepower as well as superior positioning as of right now. Looks to be like shield battery and a possible engagement here as Plushka does get the ping as to the situation going on in between these two rocks. It's a possible flyer buy as well, unless that was a crypto drone. And yes, it's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be ZH on that for Avangard as they're looking for more KPs to benefit this squad. But again, oh no, Plushka missing some very important shots. That's gonna allow them to actually vacate the area, make their way out in between these two rocks. And now it looks like new esports in a fight of their own as the EMP goes out. Not only that, but we're going to see Roger Bunter take quite a bit of damage. Ooh. The incendiary going down on top of him also trying to get out of this bad position here for their team to make sure that they don't lose one of the most important legends they have this early on. Alliance though getting able to clean up. I believe that was going to be solo queue goats going down just there now. They're also trying to deal with this other squad on the inside. Circle's closing very quickly though. Thankfully it ends just before it encroaches upon their own territories. They are given this momentary position of relief. They're going to need to keep up the heat, though, as new esports is putting oh, the pressure no. onto them. The hop over, they've got him contained in a kill box. They just need to execute it. Roger, oh. with some issues, though. He's going to go down first. That's the initiation they need. 
Here comes the Mastiff swing here now from Kersha as they try to once again pull it off, but the damage coming back out is just too much for them to deal with. Finally, we see new esports able to turn it around into their own favor and eliminate Alliance, but here comes Avangard for the third party. Should be an easy cleanup for them. They've got them contained also. All the EMPs in, as well as the Arc Stars. It's purely electric-based battle here for Avangard, but they're plugged in as they break all the shields, and oh, the shoe is on the other foot now. Are you trying to use the Kratos cover? Well, isn't that funny? Look at all the death boxes as you're dealt with the exact same way as you did to your opponents. Avangard dealing taste of their own medicine to new esports as they'll be eliminated. Avangard know this is a game where they can make some very serious impact, and they are not going to waste that opportunity swinging three all the squads, the John. Tunnel. There's three squads remaining right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> and everyone is taking a very passive position. It's CMK, Avangard, as well as Ply Totem here. Surprisingly enough, third impact somehow got eliminated in the process of all this chaos. They had, in my opinion, the strongest position in the game up until recently. But very surprising to see them not in the top squads for this game here. So... Let's see who comes out on top of it. CMK looking for their second win. Are there two squads both looking for their first here? Let's see who's going to end up getting it, as the circle still has quite a bit of area to work with here, so it's probably going to be some time before the fight is forced. At least one of them, though, is seeming to try and put the pressure onto the squad at the lowest point on the ground right now. Keep in mind, it's Avangard hiding out in the tunnel. CMK holding the cliff. Our third squad waiting out down below. Perfect vision for Sonya, but he's not able to get the outright down right there. Only the 145. Avangard go. gonna dive in in the process here, but no, Reply Totem is holding their own. They're gonna be able to wipe out Avangard. Now it's Reply Totem versus CMK for the title oh. on the inside of this matchup. It's gonna explode full out at this point, folks, here. You've got the PK Graver combo for Sonya also, as he's moving forward with the PK, trying to hunt down these players. All six of from each squad are still alive here at this point in time. No one having gone down just yet, but CMK oh. is going to be the one to fulfill their destiny and take control of a second win on the inside of this tournament. Oh, this second day so far has just been an absolute treat, John. I mean, CMK finally rebounding. We've already seen them have a great matchup today. Yesterday, having their first victory, but the second day, finding their second and in brilliant fashion as well. Fantastic positioning throughout this entire game, but it really seems to be uh, the day of the underdog. As of right now, a lot of our top end squads being eliminated very early on and leaving openings, some cracks in the armor for these other squads to slide in and actually get some very important placement points, especially for Avangard here. I actually believe that as of right now, Avangard in first place, if I'm not mistaken, mistaken but either way cmk making some very broad strokes inside of that game to really rebound and try and crack into that top three now keep in mind yeah cmk still at close to the top of our pack as well sitting right around fifth or sixth place the last time i was able to catch them on the leaderboard there so that type of a win for them assuming they were able to get quite a few kps in the process is going to mean that they're also going to be in a really really strong position to contend once more adding yet another element to this top pool of players is looking to get the win this tournament is not assured for anyone and is going to remain contested probably for the remaining number of games we have because so many teams are so close and unfortunately we can't seem to find ourselves a consistent winner out of these, which is a good thing because that means it leaves it up to the performances for each team on a game to game basis to see who's going to top this one up. We're going to take a short break, folks, and then when we do come back, we'll have these scores. Very excited to see who's in front now before we get started with game 13. Stick with it. We'll be back with more for the GLL Master Spring. Welcome back once again, folks. Quite a bit of action transpiring here inside of our European finals here at the GLL Master Spring. My name is Blue Jenny here on the broadcast is Stokes. We've got the scores ready from match 12. Let's take a look and see who topped things out. And more importantly, who's now at the top of our overall leaderboard. CMK taking that one as no surprise to us. There are nine kills also going into their favor. So quite a healthy lead at 21 points. The real story though is the fact that we've seen Reply Totem keep up. I think this is the second game in a row where we see them have like a top two or top three finish overall mm -hmm. on points. So starting to make some serious moves there on the scoreboard and definitely going to make a difference to try and push them up a couple more points in the ratings.
Well, same as new esports as well. I mean, this team, I don't even know where they came from. I mean, yesterday, very, very quiet. Didn't ex really expect anything from them coming into today. I'll be extremely honest with you. But now rebounding in a major fashion. Fifth place this time, previously winning the last matchup with that caustic play mm -hmm. and the nade. So uh -huh. let's check to see who is topping things off now. We got three teams over 100 points, but Avangard have finally taken first for the very first time. And this top 10 overall looking quite spicy when it comes down to it. Oh, I my mean, this, gosh. Look dude, all the way down to eighth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this is really shaken up over the last couple of games because so many of our top dogs have been unable to get good positioning early on and have gotten taken out on rotates. You know, this is this team's like Gambit and whatnot that have been unable, unable to contend. Nessie as well has had a really rough run the past couple of games, so they've been unable to get the points that they have wanted to get. And that's opened up the way for teams like CMK to carve into the top three. Reply Totem also now in the top five. Alliance and Underrated also in contention now. Also, Alliance snuck in with seven points in that last game too, so they made a pretty notable gain. They're still behind Underrated unfortunately actually still tied with them I should say as somehow I like, can't seem to get past them uh, but either way they're keeping it very very close and what as, as you mentioned Stokes like the top eight here right now uh, realistically like the top seven could overtake avant-garde which is the single game going into their favor well, uh, yeah, and the, the funniest thing about that is it's really going to be up to Avangard and what they're able to produce inside of these next matches because as we've seen from them, they are no stranger to these gunfights. They want the battles, actually, especially out of all of our other squads. So we'll see if they continue that aggression or if we're going to see more of a high placement type of play style. But either way, though, folks, we're into our next match already. Obviously, we have to jump on board with our friends over on CMK as they're able to find their first uh, victory of day two. CMK looking to try and channel yet another victory into their favor. I believe that would put them in front overall if they were able to negate themselves a third one on the inside of this matchup. But most of our teams only having at most two wins so far from the play that we've had between yesterday and today. So. We'll see if they can once again find repeat success. But as we move away from them and over to Skyhook, where things have been constantly heating up over the past couple of games, Kick is already oh. trying to get themselves into some trouble, but it seems like Denze is going to be the one that's oh. in trouble as he tries to get the bleeding damage from the Arcstar over to his opponent here. We are going to see very quickly the teammates of Denze move in to save the day, getting revenge for that down, but they're not done just yet. The other teammates working their way forward here as Kick tries to survive the onslaught. More players trying to work their way in against them. That's going to be Zipbeth going down as once again the solo Q goats and Kick are going to get into a fight before they even have proper guns. And unfortunately, Diff is going to be left as the last player standing from this engagement and will have to turn tail and run for the second game in a row. Oh, well, it doesn't look like he's going to be getting away with it as Avangard rotate in. And well, we were talking about it before. Uh, they really enjoy fights. They like gun. They like these gunfights they want to try and get these kps and well the third party coming through again and they like literally plush is walking around with an evil like a mop and just cleaning up house right now <laughs> this is insanity he's just walking around with corpses on the floor and getting kps for free because of it looking for yet another one here which i believe will give him a uh, kill lead as well as soon as he's able to deal with that and uh well actually no well i lied there you go look i am a little bit better than i thought i was yeah, so Kill League going to transfer over to them just by default because they take out the current Kill Leader and everybody else. For the most part, only having three kills to play with. Cyback actually did make it out of here. Somehow escaped that onslaught on the inside and is now just trying to loot on the outskirts of Skyhook here. And of course, around Trials also, since the solo queue goats did bypass that in the process of fighting Kick. Well, the problem is that's going to leave Cyback alone here, only with a Gibby to play with also here for the remaining, uh, remaining closure of this game. Definitely not going to be able to work his way back to those banners in time with how far he's already gone away from that and the fact that AVG are probably actively defending that. Let's talk a little bit more about the circle. We're finally going to change things up yet again as we'll be centralized over here at Countdown and Lava Fisher as we get into the late game already. So many of our teams working over their CMK over towards Lava Fisher already, but they're going to have to contend with Nessie if they push too much further as this is Nessie's natural landing. Yeah, a lot of these teams more than likely aware of that as well as they have not changed up their landing a single time. So going to be working that lava fissure area. But a lot of the squads starting to rotate into our green zone, most notably as of right now, triple or third impact, excuse me, 
as they're working through Countdown, but still have quite a few squads around this area as well that they could possibly deal with. It looks like Balan not necessarily aware of the uh, people bearing down on top of him, as well as an update with major pushers here. Uh, a squad that we did not see a single thing from yesterday, but now being the bane of a lot of these top squads' existence, as, they, as they've continually found some very high impact KPs that uh, have really made it difficult for a lot of these squads to try and find high placement and continue to hold on to that lead. And that's something that we've been talking about throughout this day. And just like this, yet again, major pushers finding some very important frags and it's gonna be on to Dippities. That's a huge one. We see third impact trying to set themselves up. Ballon of Force is taking quite a bit of heat from the incendiary, but it does block the way for opponents trying to swing in from the second doorway. Opens up Jazaz's possibility to try to push out here too, but he's going to lose Zeke in the process of trying to get aggressive there. Has to jump down instead. Nearly gets caught mid-scan. Oh. There we go. Able to round it back real quickly. Take out Sir, uh, Sir Olite from one of our straggling squads there and set up a nice victory for third impact to put them in good standings here. Two squads already gone from the fight and the action is still continuing here as GYD jumping in on the train station over here by Skyhook. They're also gonna try to get into a fight. Oh, it looks like Dell's been able to down one of the kick members, but now we only had two or possibly one of those remaining, but either way, still a down nevertheless. So it seems like kick does indeed uh, have some stragglers around somewhere just not necessarily helping out their teammate. Looks like it's a hold up in the bottom of the uh, building here, and they're going to quickly deal with that. GYD take down Cyback as well as Denze, and that's going to be Kick eliminated. So both of the squads that we saw earlier on, Kick and Solo Q Goats that were inside of that engagement, both dealt with accordingly and uh, very unfortunately as well. But OCN, uh, our bottom squad as of right now in the, uh, well, the grand scheme of things on the leaderboard. And while things not changing up for them either, not able to secure a single KP and knocked out in the initial straights of this match. So aside from those squads here, we're back over seeing how exactly the fights are going to transpire. So we do have Two more sitting very, very close to each other here, although but only team deciding that it's not worth the potential push and the issues that would come along with that. They do back away from Aeris team relatively quickly. You still have the squad for Rubik and friends over on the train yard as well, but that also is not going to see any sort of combat as they're still in the midst of a rotate, working their way very much through the tunnel to try to get towards the circle here. They are not prioritizing taking the fight whatsoever. Gambit, in the meantime, Trying to lock on to them, see exactly what they are going to be up to. They're going to be moving in early here, taking some aggression on the inside of this fight, but not able to make serious impact as yet. They're in the midst of a fight versus Alliance, too. So we got a real superstar clash going on. This early on with only 17 squads left. This would be a real shame if either of them ends up getting eliminated right here it's because of the potential coming out of these teams. But at the same time, they are vying for that late game circle control this early on. So it makes sense that we see these squads work their way over here. CMK, obviously, way up on the north side also. Yeah, well, this is going to be Lava Fisher, so that does put forth the question, where is Nessie around this area? Because this is usually where we end up seeing them drop, so obviously had to rotate somewhere, more than likely get an update on that situation later on. But either way, looks like NCD uh, and some problems of their own, but looks like it might be easily dealt with. This fantastic position here from Dolphin, able to deal so much damage to these shields and might continue the aggression here as that Thermite Grenade goes out. And yes, it's gonna be the pad now as they spring into action. Badoli moving forward now with that flatline as well, still has a shield to be able to play around the shotgun if it's needed as they're bearing down onto their opponents. Uh, pretty slow moving as of right now as their opponents are trying to back up and run away from them. But as we know, Dolphin never letting that down without a fight, continuing the onslaught and continuing the damage dealing. But as soon as I say that, only really able to get one bullet to connect at range. Unfortunately, not much happening there for Dolphin out of that fight. So him and the rest of NCD more than uh -oh. likely gonna end up calling that play off. They're not really gonna have a choice now is the issue. They are stuck on the outskirts of the circle. To be fair, not very far from the outskirts of the circle. But regardless, as you guys can see, they'll have trouble no matter which way they go here. So trying to decide which way is going to be the safest very quickly. At the same time, their opponent's still down below on the cliffside, also needing to make that push, and they need to do it soon. You can see Yoko getting incredibly low there. Hopefully, he'll have mats to be able to heal that back up. I would assume there is. As they, yeah, there we go. We're going to see a couple syringes getting popped off in order to keep that player alive and well. As they need to move around here quickly in order to get 
out of this situation and into the circle. But the problem is NCD may still have to fare off against this team if they route the same way that NCD is currently rotating through to get into the circle themselves here. Well, luckily enough, second circle, so they're not going to be taking really any damage at all. It's going to be that small tick that they'll be able to deal with um, pretty well, especially given that they have plenty of mats to do so. And Dolphin currently sitting with quite the loadout given the circumstances. Spitfire R301 with that three times scope as well. So has that LMG for range as well as that R301 if things get hairy inside of those closer engagements. And always good for, well, really anything you necessarily want it for. And finally, that update on Nessie like you were talking about. But as soon as we hop on board, it seems like they've lost JMW. I believe he was downstairs and it's going to be quite unfortunate for them. They will end up using their uh, defensive bombardment, but it's not going to have any effect over third impact who are currently all the way in the basement of this building and simply waiting for graceful and the rest of this squad to come down from the attic yeah not going to see much transpire for there for some time in fact probably won't see it happen ti actually has a lot more room to navigate down below here than it initially appears they're not necessarily locked in a basement but rather just navigating the lower levels of the lava fisher facility here GYD in the meantime still rotating out from Skyhook has caught one team in the process of that rotation. Possibly Alliance or another squad here just going off the colors, assuming it's the same from game to game, but not going to be able to initiate onto that squad as there's actually going to be a third element getting added into this one. They spot on even more players in the distance. Still trying to make a mad dash into the barrier here for round two because that's going to be closing in in just a moment against these teams. Away from that, Yappers. Still waiting on the inside of that building, too, here. PKMK specifically holding the lower floor, and, or I should say the lower floor stairs to make sure that the roof team is not trying to jump down on top of them. He's also going to be running the wingman as well, which uh, we've been seeing some mixed results with, but with that target finder on there, definitely bode well when it comes to some of the engagements, obviously uh, highlighting the enemy and making that a little bit easier to track. But either way, going to be holding on to this building for the time being. NCD with a big scan here for Nogs as he'll get six targets in his sights and get a full read as to the situation going on inside of this building. So I'm assuming we are not going to see a single move out of these guys. They want nothing to do with the situation going on in there until somebody more than likely gets down. But it looks to be GYD to make the initial move. They do not want a single thing to do with the situation either, as they might possibly have an engagement come through here. They'll set up the portal immediately, and that'll be a makeshift backup plan if they necessarily need it. GYD primarily setting up a rotation point, as Stokes mentioned there, in order to get out and give themselves a second angle. Oh. More importantly, a way to rotate out of this position. They've got to be careful, though. Nearly losing Sir Dell in the process of doing that just has a sliver of HP left after the process is complete. And now, even worse, that circle is starting to close in on them. They're actually going to use it in order to wrap out of what's going to become a very chaotic situation very soon here. Here, Rubik's squad now taking control of that building, but not necessarily having it secured You've got Reply Totem rotating in, and they're not the only ones as well. We'll see or possibly another one of our squads in the midst of that one. Still trying to find their own impact in the midst of this chaos going on just outside Skyhook right now. And oh. there we go. Yapper's finally getting engaged upon, but Doli's going to be able to take him down. Yapper's, of course, trying to wrap around, but they can't seem to maintain too much pressure going on to them. Orange very, very low there on the Wraith. Now Reply Totem going to push in, attempt to clean things up, but no. Their opponents are holding their own out of this fight here, all down to Amaz, who wasn't even in the building at that point, has since jumped out and really doesn't have much of a choice here. Has to completely give up the position. Yappers try to poke back in at the same time here. They're also having their own set of issues due to them getting ripped up pretty heavily just a few seconds ago, and at least in Orange's case, not able to fully recover just as of yet. More importantly, just buying time for Rubik and PKMK here on Yappers. Well, looks like misread causing some calamity inside of the building especially for ncd here but they'll be able to get away with at least two of them alive but it's going to be the quick move for quite a few of these squads as it seems to be they're right across the way from each other just not necessarily noticing what's going on and now we have yappers chasing down a singular target and it's actually gonna be the last player of totem amaz finally taken down and that's gonna be yappers with another kp here and this is what we're talking about from a lot of these squads that have been showing up today it seems like they've just been plagued by these early exit 
from these lower end squads on our leaderboard, obviously, not actually like skill wise or anything like that, but leaderboard wise, taking them out and making the situation that much more difficult as a lot of these placement points as well as KPs going to these squads that can't necessarily fight for first place. So we do have Yappers with control of that facility. I'm also trying to take out Yoko and Kray as they retreat back from that situation, but unfortunately not going to be able to catch them. They will make it over towards Countdown there, so Yappers going to have to try to keep up the pressure if they want those kills, but the problem is they move into there. There's more elements being added into this. Have at least one squad blocking the way of Yoko and Air as they work their way into Countdown, but the good news is for that team is they still have control over a circle, they're going to have to fend off against the Yappers, though, as they're now starting to move in from Skyhook. And at the same time, we got GYD moving in from the north down into the circle here also. Underrated in a very, very delicate situation there, too. You can see Dazus had to split off really far from his team in order to make sure that they can hold off against the Rotates from the east, while at the same time having to have a Horizon in case when you watch out for primarily Alliance, but also any of the other squads on the inside of the Fisher that are going to try and mess with them on that exposed position over by the train tracks. We're going to go over to Disco Boys in the meanwhile here. They're in the midst of a pretty intense fight. Sirius definitely getting an advantage. He's able to crack out his opponent's Gibby. Not able to fully commit to this just as of yet with the circle slowly encroaching back onto them. Alliance was able to down Kearney from another squad off screen here also, but the Disco Boys, they're focused on their retreat here. I believe they may think that threat they were dealing with just a couple seconds ago may no longer be an issue as that player may have rotated out to a different position. Yeah, especially with that third circle dealing quite a bit of damage. Major pushers now in an engagement as well from multiple different angles. It looks like they've gotten the drop on a team as Ranch has the high ground able to use it accordingly, but currently R99 Prowler, so more than likely going to be using that Prowler for some ranged engagements here, but it's NCD uh, who looks to be more than likely on the receiving end of this, and they'll go for the reposition with the Octane Pad. They'll fly all the way across Countdown and try and find some safer pastures. Immediately up the rope to try and get the flank off onto this opposing squad, but as soon as we get off from them, it looks like GYD are also instead of some hot water with a possible rotation through the circle that could happen around this rock at any given moment. Yeah, the rock is cutting off our opponents on the other side oh. of it so badly. And GYD is ready to just rip them apart if they go that way. Clutch scan comes out, actually saves the day more than likely for that team on the other end of the rock right there as that gives them the info they need to say that, okay, guys, this probably isn't the best idea to push this direction. We're going to go over to Alliance, who are still in the oh. midst of their own engagement. Hank is very, very close to the pressure. Going to see Badoli go down. That is going to be NCD losing a player to Yoko. Meanwhile, that's happening back at Countdown as we kind of take a look at that real quick. But fights are happening all over the place here as we encroach on our top 10. We'll get our team tracker up here, get some updates on who has been knocked out. And notably, NCD, CMK, as well oh. as Avant Garde all out of the fight right now, meaning that Alliance, Gambit, Nessie, underrated all have the potential opportunity to make serious gains on the points and possibly take the lead with a strong enough point total coming from kps and you have to feel terrible for t-rex as well inside of this it seems that every single time that a lot of the uh front runners end up losing out early they're inside of that pack as well so they're not able to close the gap how they necessarily want to Alliance now, though, inside of a fight of their own, but not being too aggressive. They'll get a good scan as to what's going on down below them, but still have to worry about the angle from across the way. Circle coming in onto them now as well, so they'll go for the reposition with the portal. IPN not taking any damage from the circle as of yet, but lots of damage coming in from the Arc Stars. They have to go for the reposition now as most of Alliance has been down. It's all down to Hackus, who has such minimal HP. Gonna need practically a full Phoenix kit to get back into the fight, but full new kill leaders coming through here for new esports as they'll also get uh, some information on some possible bogeys down low inside of this residence as they take control of the top floor. It's an important catch there for new esports, knocking Alliance out of this one on their move into the next circle there. Underrated still in this fight also, and we know how aggressive they've been in the past. Still with a full three-player count on their team this late as well, so we can expect some more of that to work its way in in just a moment. Have that build-up coming in in just a moment here for these guys, but for the time being, they're happy with the positioning that they have. 
A lot oh. of nades working their way in, though. There's going to be a huge amount of pressure going on to Underrated. And Horizon can't maintain it. He's immediately going to end up going down. We have an Octane gas, gas Mine working its way in there that's going to really get in the way of Underrated's capability to move from this position also. But no, the team that's aggressing oh, no. New Esports is going to get overwhelmed by Gambit as they also run into this fight. Gambit wants to take over not only the kills onto the first squad that jumped into this, but also try to take down New Esports holding on the inside here. It's going to be a fair knuckle brawl as all these teams fighting oh. with just a few inches of each other. Gambit can't maintain though. All coming down to Artico to try to clutch this one out in the 1vx using that down shield quite literally as his own trying to maintain sitting here it's gonna work out as we see a couple more players fall Artico gets his shield back up and does not have the confidence to go for a res just as of yet they are blocking him into this corner buying him the time that he needs to get those shields back up but it's not gonna last forever gyd still sitting in the midst of this fight and they are not the only ones there is at least one other squad mixed up in this somewhere here as they try to survive their gambit are finally going to falter their first two players getting knocked out their third right around the corner still alive as far as i can tell here on the inside of this situation but gyd certainly have control i think the death boxes are stacked so damn high that you can't even get in the door so gambit <laughs> have to worry about a single entry to this building now and i also believe that articia will be able to recover some banners here but the issue is look how tiny the circle is no, no, it's no, not going not to benefit them plate. in the slightest exactly no benefit in that regard this looks like a gyd game all across the board but funny enough we still have six squads inside of this so that doesn't even matter actually is now gyd coming under fodder they'll need to create Create some space here as the circle starts bearing down on top of them. You keep getting some good damage off here as these squads continue to muster up and jump right into the fray. The damage coming back and forth. And yes, John, they can't get through that door. The death box is too big. But as soon as I say that, Ethics finds there a way. There we go. They can through. hop it. They crouch over. They have to jump and crouch over all of the bodies currently inside of this building. We're down to three squads and seven men remaining. Ethics currently controlling the kill house, but they need to put in more effort here. It's still two other squads left in the mix. Only one of them with full capacity, though. It's a 3v3v1, as far as I can tell. Is have lost everyone except for Krama, who's now trying to play this out to see if he can get a free second place and the extra two to three points that would come along with that. Look at all these boxes, man. We've seen, like... Four or five different squads sitting down here, all getting wiped out. Apparently eight boxes sitting in the midst of that chaos right there. So nearly three full squads dead on the floor right before your eyes. Uh, yeah, Disco Boys not really having any fun no longer, especially given the name. It's just kind of tragic because I don't think they're dancing very much anymore. Uh, either way, though, it'll be a better finish for them and I believe one of their best finishes that they've had. Uh, but this is looking to be an ethics match. Uh, especially given how things have, well, broken down so far. This would be a, possibly another full squad that they have to deal with on top of the straggler from Disco Boys as Ethics now in an engagement inside of the kill house once again as things seemingly starting to pop off. Air will immediately go for Beast of the Hunt, get those highlights on the enemies as the engagements start to muster. Arkstar is still out, but this is still quite slow as they're simply biting for some control. But as soon as that Gibraltar shield goes off, it's all hands on deck for Ethics as they hop immediately inside with their own shield as well. It's a close range engagement, it's a defensive bombardment as well to try and deal the damage as triple impact will be cleaned up. Third impact now gone and Ethics no with a no way. one. It's a 1v1. Cray with very low HP. Can he do it with the shotgun? The Eva's going to run out of ammo soon and Ethics are able to do it the gibraltar gibraltar combat ethics come out on top of and what a match from them disco boys nearly quite literally stealing the game out of the hands of ethics as we see there gibby try to make that last minute desperate play to close out the 1v1 but the gibby on ethics just that, that much better he's instead able to close out in that engagement and secure the game for ethics as they're going to take their first win here in the tournament a crazy shakeup so many teams involved at that ending fight there i can't even tell you where our top pack is going to be ending up there things were shaking up in a very very big way and it was an incredibly chaotic end of the game with somewhere between like four to six squads dying in that single little two-story hut at the end of the match 
and the insane thing about this is that like the the ending to this almost overshadowed how this all began because you have to remember it was solo Q goats who end up getting taken out initially by kick and then Avangard takes out kick and then Avangard's down there's just so many things happening here for our overall storyline that have just made things extremely complicated and uh I definitely think that this right here has to be the biggest highlight for me this house as you dubbed it the kill house of of this match i mean uh, just so much action going down inside of what seems to be uh, well a little bit you know bigger than a new york apartment it's like a thousand square feet of battle <laughs> going on in here just a little uh outland settlement there for our teams to try and use to fight off an entire army it seems of legends trying to work their way back in there for the w at the end of the day and there's the clutch nearly the clutch i should say from the last remaining member of the disco boys hiding out in the midst of that fight i'm sure the other two squads wondering where the heck that third squad was in that fight but they did not have time to wait that one out so quick break coming up here folks we're going to get started with match 14 as soon as we come back from it as well as have our very important update on where the scores stand be right back in just a few Welcome back once again, folks. Three games left in our final here at the GLL Master Spring, and the competition could not be closer here. So many of our teams still in contention to be able to take first place at the end of this event. Quite literally, the top seven teams were possible to take over first place as the start of that last game. Let's see where everybody ended up. We've got the scores first for the game itself. Ethics obviously taking the cake on that one. A four-way tie, or actually technically speaking, New Esports takes the cake on kills there, but a four-way tie beyond that for kills as six, 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 six down the first four teams there. Ethics, of course, Disco Boys, Third Impact, and Yappers. These are teams we haven't seen much of yet on the top of the scoreboard yet, right? So these are going to be some pretty major gains. Uh, yeah, and that's the thing, right? Like we were talking about inside of the match is when these, you know, lower end teams are able to have some high place finishes. That's going to be taking a lot of points away from these top end teams. And look at that top five right there. I believe every single one of these squads currently on the bottom half of the leaderboard. So let's check it out, folks, and see how this goes and breaks down. Who is our new leader? It's still going to be Avangard by just two measly points. And in front of Gambit Esports. CMK overtaking Nessie as well for third place, but you can see just how damn close this is. All the way down to eighth place now. NCD currently with 91 points. Okay, so generally we're using a margin of about 20 points for teams to be able to come back in a single game here. So that means Reply Totem, Nessie, CMK, Gambit, and Avangard all competing for that at the moment here with, to be fair, Underrated Alliance, just a couple points outside of that. And with an extra stellar game, could still make up the difference as well there. We are not done as of yet. NCD even in that pool also there. So it's really a top eight fight here now as all of these teams are fighting for survival. You guys will note, of course, that the large majority of those teams not able to make the impact they would have liked in that last game. So we're not going to see much movement in the pack other than Avangard slowly maintaining their lead and growing. Uh, Gambit, of course, moving up into second place as well there with the 114 total. Only two points behind Avangard, as I believe Stokes had mentioned. So very, very close here. I mean, I'm ready to get into the next game here because we need to find ourselves another winner. Oh man, I'm so very excited. And, and actually, the, the thing to consider the most out of that leaderboard is actually from our last match. Uh, all five of our top five from that previous match in between 11th and 15th place on the overall leaderboard. And, and that's why we're seeing this get to such close margins amongst all of these squads. Ethics finding their very first victory inside of that last one. This is looking really, really solid for some of these teams to get inside of the money that we know all of them are fighting for. All right, guys, so let's get into it here. I was going to follow Ethics at the start as they're going to drop their way into Fragment. We'll see where some of our other teams are. We've obviously had quite a bit of contention at Skyhook. Skyhook is becoming like a constant battleground for drops every single time, and that's not the only place. We've had one battle recently, a countdown also two here. So it's not completely out of the cards here that we, will see, that we won't see teams fighting immediately after the drop. Let's take a look and see if, in fact, that is going to happen at all here as Ethics is working their way back down over here. And yeah, there we go already. Right, we talked about two countdowns. So we're going to see the fight between T-Rex and the other squad that's present here. All right, well, T-Rex not having the greatest start to today. Obviously, want some higher end finishes so they can and attempt to try and get this win here. Either way, though, Xerifert and the rest of the squad 
Well, not the rest of the squad any longer, actually. In fact, is this Hemlock just not doing the damage necessary to assist? Deputy's already a lot of damage dealt to him as well as Kearney being down, so don't have access to the Gibraltar shield that could be the saving grace for them uh, in moments like this. Zerifer now down to very minimal HP and doesn't have any shield batteries to work with given the circumstances, so it's going to be down to the med kits and syringes for the last two remaining T-Rex members. So T-Rex trying to survive here in the onslaught from their opponents. A bit of an arsenal built up specifically for Dippities. He can definitely get back into the fight at any given moment here. But the most important part about this is trying to get that Gibby back into the fray here. Especially if their opponents try to get aggressive with their own. They need that shield to play into these close range fights should they transpire. They're going to be able to get him back up. Curdy back in the fight. Xerifer taking an engagement in the meanwhile up on the front partition of Countdown here. He needed to back up relatively quickly, even a shield swap being maintained during the process of that fallback. He'll be okay, and obviously with some syringes can get himself back to relatively full HP, and we'll be there in some time anyway due to the passive health regen on his legend. Circle, as we take a look at that, we are going to have a little bit of a different one, kind of similar to the one we had about two, three games ago as we drift over towards that north, northeast side of the map. Characterizing Epicenter and Survey Camp, and already a couple teams routing their way over there. But Skyhook still remains a battleground kick, as well as uh, Solo Q Goats are in this constant battle, it seems, in this game is going to be no different whatsoever. That's, your, uh, that's our observer bet as to where the circle is going to go here. <laughs> so we'll see if, uh, if they end up being correct in the late game. Is they're going to predict we'll end up by the train tracks up on the north side. Let's see if they're going to end up being right. I think one team actually agrees with them as it looks like we've got them heading up towards the far north oh. side of the map now. Kick with the right to engage over onto Solo Q Goats, but unfortunately not the damage they were looking for. I think they were hoping to completely down one of these members before jumping to the inside. So now they've got to sit here, wait out the utility, or more importantly, that EMB will help out with it too. In's going to go side back, but he takes a lot of heat from a nade on the way in. Same can be said for Denze. Both of them losing shields. Denze going down oh. entirely. Solo Q Goats, are they finally going to get revenge here? Seems as though it's the case as they went out the fight this time against Kick. And Kick trying to do what they did the last time, close out shop on Solo Q Goats, but didn't seem to break that way this time around. Zippeth apparently in yet another gunfight as we saw some fire going on, but don't necessarily know if this other squad is going to actually engage. But Solo Q Goats will be able to muster quite a bit of materials from inside of Trials. And yeah, they actually do indeed have another squad right on the outside here. So a possible engagement coming through at a moment's notice, but doesn't seem like anything will be popping off just yet. So nice beginning here for Solo Q Goats so far. Definitely going to be able to clean that one up. Obviously, the uh, Skyhook loot that was already sitting on the corpses of the members of that team they just wiped out, they're going to be pretty much for free going on to them too. And then whatever's remaining over in that zone, they can take should they choose to go back there. Uh, problem is you do have Nessie, I believe, in that general direction. So not going to be able to immediately route down over there as they'll be in the path of that. We're going to go to CMK, who's also in the midst of another fight here. Going to be, going to be unfortunately pushed out into this fight a little bit earlier than I think he was ready to be pushed into it for. But regardless, they'll be able to fall back without too much of an issue. Re-engage on their own terms at some later point here, just deciding that this tunnel is not worth the heat versus Avantgarde specifically. Good choice probably in the long run of things, and we'll have to see what they choose to do to make up for that. Because at the moment, we are going to say we are going to see Avantgarde maintain full control over this tunnel. He'll be able to hold on that onto that for the foreseeable future, but Alliance well, now inside of hot water as they'll be forced to use the Gibraltar shield pretty early on here. Hackus needs to bat back up and he'll do so, but the EMP through and we know how damning that can be. Half that shield now removed, but a fantastic defensive bombardment to create some space between them and T-Rex. And that's going to force T-Rex back as well as they don't necessarily want to chase down Alliance. That's all of a sudden going to be a bad engagement for them. So can't blame them for reeling that back in. And Alliance going to continue to... Uh, actually leave the premises as well. Don't necessarily want to push forward onto that as of right now. But Yappers inside of an engagement now on top of this building with some off angles here, some really solid damage coming in from Yappers Wraith. OJ currently dealing some very, very solid blows, but now PKM inside the building with the EVA back and forth out of the shield. Can he get the blood out as well? No, finally down as it's all left up to carry Rubik. He left time for Rubik at least to be able to rebound and get him back to full HP. So has a chance to jump back into this. 
Both players still actually alive at this point as well, have not been finished off as of yet by anyone else that's involved in the fight. Epix is being forced to fall back as they've lost Cray. And on top of that, we're gonna see Third Impact jump onto them to try and seal the deal. There goes the down to Orion J. Aside from that, Third Impact still with the range here. Is the spray going to be enough from the charge rifle to take out this last straggling player? So close, but unfortunately not getting the job done. So that last member going to be able to make it out of there. I believe that's the last player from Ethics escaping. Oh, Cashier now in an engagement of his own. Still has an EMP as well, but doesn't necessarily need to use it just yet. It seems like they do indeed have a drop on one of these squads. And that Crypto Drone is likely going to be with his weight in gold soon, unless they're able to just do it through sheer firepower. And that looks to be what Roger Bogger is doing as of right now. Beautiful kill from him from across the way. And that's going to be a nice KP going into their back pocket. But quite a few squads still inside of this building. And not only quite a few squads, but I believe that's underrated entering the fray as of right now as these two squads seemingly existing or coexisting as of right now directly on top of each other. That's going to force new esports out into one of the uh, refineries over there across the way. It does not seem as though Underrated want to try and challenge that just as of yet. They're still aware of the fact that Third Impact also has roof control of the main building here, so they don't want to end up in a sandwich position between themselves and Third Impact, because that would almost certainly lead to the deaths of Underrated. Underrated have been on a tear here in a couple of these games, starting to really breach into the top dog position inside of this tournament here, so they don't want to mess that up with an early elimination being one of the first five squads to get knocked out inside of this game. Oh, Avangard still in control of this tunnel, although it, it does seem to be fading slowly. Defaus already losing quite a bit of HP as ZH simply trying to hold things down for his friends whilst they try to shield back up. They'll need some assistance very soon from what seems to be a possible EMP coming out here from ZH. Gets on the Crypto Drone and really just uses it for information gain as of right now. Just going to move that forward into a position to where if they do try and aggress, he can pop that EMP at a moment's notice and turn the tide of battle. But it's solo Q Goats actually on the delivering end as of right now. Def taking quite a bit of heat. No back up to get back up with these cells and start to shield. So Shiv actually with forward progress here, that EMP not going to come through as finally actually it will, but I believe that it's only just going to be a disengage use instead. Bit of a slow push here from the solo queue goes down that they've been able to push out avant-garde from this position. Gonna be happy with, oh, there we go actually. ZH getting knocked out completely there and well, more than likely lead to possibly the end of avant-garde. We'll have to see if anyone else survived the engagement. For now, Solo Q Goat's taking over this very powerful spot on the inside of the train tunnel. Lots of cutoffs here for them to be able to use. Third impact back over towards the refinery seems to be getting themselves into another scrap in the meanwhile there. As uh, they're taking down quite, or they're taking down yet another squad here trying to eliminate them and keep the increase on those KPs. Aside from that, looking like Skyhook seems to be the main battleground for at least three different teams. That includes the solo queue goats who are diving into this head first also. They'll move in, immediately find engagement against another squad here. Shiv looking for the way to route back around and really get into the inside of this building. But upon meeting that squad and seeing that they're fully bunkered to the inside of this, they're going to back up to the next building over and play safely into that position while they wait out the circle. Well, defensive bombardments on deaf ears and it's going to make this kind of complicated for either of these squads, but not necessarily as neither of them really are uh, hopping to and trying to progress forward. AVG still holding on to this building as they did lose one of their members earlier on. So just trying to go for better placement. As soon as we say that, Solo Q Goats will hop immediately into the building. The Gibraltar Shield already down, using that to a T to deal so much damage to this squad. And oh, they'll just make mincemeat of AVG. And that's going to be a very quick defusal of the situation. But now T-Rex jump into the fray. A lot of squads going to be happy about the elimination of Avant-Garde. Keep in mind, they are one of the top teams right now and certainly contending for first place, if not pretty much in that position already here. Solo Q Goats had to be careful of the third party is trying to route its way in. T-Rex attempting to capitalize upon the chaos that just transpired in this building, but it's not working here. They're turning it back around. T-Rex only able to down dip so far. The favor is being returned to in-kind twice. Give now the kill leader inside of the match as well here. They're going to get the opportunity to revive their teammates. Only a couple steps away from the circle as well as that's starting to close in. It hasn't actually hit them yet, despite what you just saw on the screen. 
but it will in a moment. However, like we were mentioning, or like I was just mentioning, uh, just a few steps away here, a good 30 second walk, and they're in a perfect position once again. That's assuming, of course, that Alliance doesn't cut them off in the process as they're now in prime position to specifically knock out solo queue goats, and that's exactly what they're trying to do here. Well, taking the building away from our previous leaders in Avangard and then immediately backing off T-Rex as well to defend their position. This is looking so solid from Solo Q Goats right now, especially with the amount of KPs rolling in from those two engagements. But speaking of leads and wanting to try and build them, Alliance now in for some show and possibly an engagement of their own as Hakus. Currently clambering up these rocks for a higher position here. Seeing if any of these squads will end up rotating out of the buildings from Skyhook. Gatekeeping as of right now, not only to tag some people up, but to possibly get it down and secure the frag that they need. Alliance with a good read as to where one of these squads are currently rotating to. That is actually going to be what looks to be Zippeth as well as the rest of Solo Q Goats are trying to make a break for the other end of this canyon, but you can see Alliance are doing their damnedest to try and keep that from happening. GYD having some issues against Nessie on the far north side also there. Nessie gatekeeping out GYD. Thankfully, we're still in an early enough circle to where GYD can just kind of eat the damage on the inside, but it's not forever. They are eventually going to leap their way out into the open here making a serious move right past Nessie. Some good stuff coming out from them. In fact, be able to pull that off. But the problem is they are a shining light in the sky right now. And everybody wants a piece of the action as we're going to see so many different squads. NCD even completely separate from this situation. We're going to be trying to unleash Hellfire onto this team. Even worse, they land directly, as far as I can tell, on top of third impact here. So need to be able to engage upon them quickly. Third impact has purple shields waiting down below. Quick swaps, they're good to go once again and ready to fend off the aggression, currently working its way in from, I believe, still GYD in this fight. Yeah, third impact taking their time with this one. And no, you're not wrong at all. Fantastic read to the situation, my man, especially given the circumstances. GYD currently on the outside of this oh, patio section, if you want to call it that. They still need to try and work their way underneath this uh, seemingly metal deck as TI continue to bow in and out of this situation. This is uh, proving to be quite the strong position here for them, but JYD all of a sudden getting eviscerated. Don't necessarily know what happened there, but Yuki will at least get the reposition, but it seems like a multi-angle fight going down now that they weren't necessarily ready for. They'll get the reposition for Dell, but are they actually going to be able to get the res? It doesn't seemingly um, look to be the case. Although Yuki will be able to get this death box and actually get some damage off onto the squad underneath as well. But now Yuki simply uh, playing for placement right now for GYD as uh, well. We're also going to have underrated across the way as well. They could hop into this battle at a moment's notice. Yeah, pretty much just waiting for the finishing of the fight, I think, here. But if they're smart, they're going to probably choose to bypass this immediate re-engagement just because TI's had such solid control over it. It's been a lot of uh, a, a lot of up and down in the inside of this fight here, so they know that more than likely Third Impact has been sitting in a pretty confident position. Regardless, though, the squad up on the cliffs, I don't have a positive idea on who that is just as of yet, but there is a third squad up on the cliffs still trying to cause problems against Third Impact here who has now finally finished the job on wiping out GYD, aggressing onto their position. GYD, of course, not much of a choice from that situation. Trapped on the outskirts of the circle, had been gatekept by another team playing up on the north side there. Nessie, I believe that was here, and unfortunately did not allow them to go through normally, so they had to go for the redeploy. But at the end of the day, did not end up giving the position they needed. Gambit kind of cleaning Whoa. up shop here against Alliance, down and out two of their players. And it's really just Hardecki out in the open also. So that will give Alliance an opportunity to rebound, if only slightly. As oh no, no, all of a sudden, we're going to see the jump come in from Solo Q Goats, ruining the potential revive right there, finishing off those two players. The third, knocking down Hakus, I believe, did make it out of that chaos, but now is going to be solo for the rest of this game. I didn't, was not assuming that Solo Q Goats was going to do their own rendition of The Shining, but that door break right there, truly incredible. Able to work their way in and get the downs. Gambit Esports on the rebound as of right now, able to get everyone back up and on top of their shields. That's really, really good when it comes down to it, but it looks like underrated when a piece of this smoke as well as possibly the whole pie. T.I. in battle with them currently is the shields dipping back and forth, but currently T.I. getting the worst of it. This is going to be a rebound to the death totem. That's what we've been expecting from underrated all day today as they're on the engage. 
Still have Dezo out with the death protection as well. Just a sliver of that HP to be fair, but he's making it work for the time being as he's going to continue to unleash all of that damage before finally losing the protection there due to the expiration of it. As he works his way forward, however, we are going to see them lose that Revenant, probably the most important character for their specific play style here. That does not mean they're out of the running just yet, but with 12 squads remaining, it's certainly going to force a changeup in their play style. Dezo. Back up on level two of this structure, trying to isolate out Balan and take him down. But Kay Swinney more than likely going to be the player that runs into him next. There we go. Able to take him down. That's the last player from third impact as they're successfully taken out by underrated. Oh. They will now take control of this facility. <laughs> oh, no. Looking for the last player alive there. Yuki from GYD just hiding in a corner. Thought they could stay hidden, but not the case. They're on the uh, hunt for that player and able to take them down relatively quickly. NCD under a lot of trouble here too, getting jumped on by Nessie. They'll be able to take them down. But look, even Nessie aren't secure here. Graceful and Matey having to fall back from that fight, keep themselves in a good position here to stay alive more than anything else as they deal with the pressure from CMK. Speaking of which, CMK still in the fray, like you were saying, they're here fully healthy, just have to get some shields back online, especially for Sonya now that he just lost those because of that defensive bombardment, but they're looking really solid coming into this top 10 right now. Fantastic positioning here on the train tracks, but this is exactly what we expected oh, given Gambit. this circle. It's just, it's so very difficult to try and fight out of these, and it looks to be that Gambit possibly with a reshield and re-engage through their own portal, so we'll have to see if that ends up breaking down that way, but oh no, actually, I believe Gambit done and dusted as that kill feed going to update us as to what happened with the ring there. But now CMK on the defense, but most notably the crypto of Jaron as he's going to have to back up now as he's taking quite a bit of damage. Nessie's out now as well with those most recent eliminations. So is Gambit due to dying in the circle. Solo Q Goats still contending on the inside of this match, but possibly not for much longer here. Shiv with such low HP. He's got the possibility oh. for a clutch. Trying to play around the shield, but it's not going to happen. Major Pushers beats them out on the inside of that fight. They've got to recover very quickly here. Fido only has a sliver of HP remaining. The same will be true for Ranches and Rex when they get them both back up. Keep in mind that circle moving in 45 seconds. They do not have a lot of time to think about how to rebound here. And more importantly, it is looking like underrated. Maybe pushed directly into their direction here. Also here, not ready to fight them for sure as they're being chased out by Clone. And the rest of that squad might not even be able to make it away here. Dezo nearly taken down. There's actually a really good opportunity here for our squad just below the cliffside to possibly surprise and jump onto Croissant. But no, Croissant gets the message. They see them down below. The scan's going to ring out from the other end of the fight here. Croissant will now shift their focus. That is going to allow for the other squad to escape, though, and get into a safer position. Well, Croissant with the high ground for right now and some of the best positioning that we've seen them have throughout this tournament. So we'll see if they're able to seal the deal and get their very first win here or if they'll fall by the wayside for yet another victor to step up to the plate. But some beautiful stuff happening here as major pushers crack the top five yet again. This is a squad that, uh, well, yesterday we did not see as uh, one of our top contenders. A very bleak future is what I had in store for them. But as of right now, they fought back and continued to take it to these top end squads and continue to be the thorn in a lot of people's sides. It's some major damage going out onto that octane. I believe that's underrated getting down. Yes, it's going to be Dazzo as a million kills start to pour in through that kill feed. You can see all of the downs happening, but none of them happening to major pushers. They're on the delivering end, especially with that Peacekeeper at range, as that choke continuing to deal some major damage to these shields as ranches not missing a singular important shot in this engagement. EMP out, but doesn't seemingly get the damage dealt that they wanted. New esports with some problems here now. Roger able to rebound back to full health, but Kashera also, needing to find a way to push back to the inside. CMK going to get jumped on here in the meanwhile by major pushers. Might be the end of them on the inside of this engagement as they can't seem to maintain. Too much pressure building up against them. They're trying to turn it back around, but two of them have already gone down. There you go. CMK out of the fight. We're into the top three here as major pushers take the cake on the inside of it. But the problem is there's an immediate rebound coming back out from new esports. Tearing them apart with this EVA. A quick switch to the R301 to try to finish off the job. Ranch is going to fall most recently here. They'll continue to clean it up the top two, but hold on, we're not done just hit. Everything falls oh to Kishnera, and he's God. not going to be able to get it done. Major pushers come back instead, and they take the map.
<laughs> oh, okay, if the reaction on my face couldn't tell you that that wasn't necessarily supposed to have it, I don't know what will. But new esports, I, I, you can't even say new esports. Who was that? Who was able to win out that 1v2? That was so unbelievably incredible. Literally using his downed friend as a makeshift shield, just battling back and forth like he's in 300 with a spear. That was truly incredible stuff coming out from new esports. And they're going to tie what is, I believe, a four-way tie now for two wins across our entirety of the final. Some insane stuff as we get into these replays. A major pusher, some good stuff coming out from them at the end of that game. But Solo Q Goats also having quite a bit of a run for themselves, I believe making it close to, to if not inside of the top five in that game while being relatively aggressive throughout the course of the game in the process here. In fact, you're going to see quite a few of these highlights coming from them as we're following them very closely. Haven't been able to have themselves a real winning game just as of yet, but that one's surely going to make an impact. Third impact, speaking of which, also doing a great job fending off a lot of the aggression by Refinery and carving out so many of those teams. But among our top dogs, the furthest to make it into that point of the game or the deepest point in the game in the top three had to be CMK, who once again pushes the envelope, gets themselves that much further into the matchup. Nearly a win as they seem to be holding great control of this train crate as well towards the end of it. That was, of course, until the aggression came in from major pushers that CMK seemingly just weren't ready, ready for, isolating them out, leaving them quite low for the re-engagement coming in. But as you could see, Rex Forever using his teammate as a shield, clutching it out with just about five or so HP right there. Nothing left to work with except his teammate's body, and they get the job done regardless. Really amazing clutch from Major Pushes there. A well-deserved win. We're going to have to take a short break, ladies and gentlemen. When we do come back, we've got the first of our two remaining games, as well as an update on the scores. We're back again, ladies and gentlemen. Just two drops left for all of our teams here in the European Finals of the GLL Master Spring. Those last two chances for our teams to make impact. And for the top pack, I mean, they're going to need it. Sam, so many of our top contending teams in the last two games have just been non-starters. They haven't been able to get anything done, and they've been knocked out, in some cases, in the bottom five. I'm What's trying going to find on? them, John. You see me looking around. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where they're at. I don't, know what the, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, like, look at our top five right now. CMK, yes. But Solo Q Goats, underrated. New Esports, which is, uh, they're just new. I mean, the name says it all. What, what else do you want? Look, you know? Avangard, Reply Totem, both getting zero points out of that game. Oh, my God. Alliance only getting two. And like in ethics, two points as well. Terrible finish for them. They've been great throughout the day as well. Croissant now having a top 10 finish, which we haven't been seeing them do. Nessie inside a seventh, T-Rex eighth, and Gambit in 10th. I mean, what, what's the scoreboard even going to look like? Gambit took it. He Dude, took it back. Look at how close this is. Look how close this is. What, what is happening in between? Okay, let's do some very quick maths real quick. Nine points separating fifth place and first. That that is absurd. If you guys don't remember the uh, how the points break down, a first place finish with zero kills, that's twelve points. That is not twelve to, points. Not to mention that realistically, in these last two games, assuming the worst for some of the people at the top of the pack, anyone in the top ten could still come back at this point. Like GYD <laughs> could make a run here if they get two wins in a row. Obviously, that's that's going to be a pretty tough ask, but in theory, it can happen. What happens, you know, if they do just get some like serious KP games <laughs> and they eliminate like half I mean, of the top of the leaderboard, you know? That's the thing now, right? Was such a small differential between so many of these teams. Oh. Every kill is going to be important. Every mm -hmm. kill point is going to matter when the difference is this small, when it's a matter of nine points between the fifth and first place positions. Getting that one extra squad wipe or two quite literally could mean the difference between fifth and first place. And keep in mind how much of a difference in the prize pool there is for that as well. First place, 15K. I think when you get down to like fourth or fifth, you're only looking at like 1,500 or 2,500. So oh, we mean, might see yeah. some, I think we might see some pretty interesting stuff in these last two games here. Teams might start getting aggressive to make up the difference. And I am all for that. If that is going to be the case, Europe has been a blast so far to cast here. We've already seen some really aggressive opening moments of these games so far with the last two showing up and with these teams needing to make impact now, that can only continue going into games 15 and 16.
Yeah, it feels like we've already turned it up to 10, so why not crank it to 11? Just snap that knob right off and throw it out the window because we're not going to need it for the rest of this. I think that the, the the calamity of this so far is can just be highlighted by this. Our most aggressive team inside of this is underrated. They've been running the same comp throughout all of this. Yes, there's been... It's been mostly the same thing, centralized around the death totem. And they don't even have the most kills inside of our leaderboard. It's actually <laughs> Avangard with 72 KPs. I, I mean, if there's not a better way to wrap that up with a bow, I don't know what to say to you. So with that being said, I'm so very ready for match 15. Not too surprising to see Avangard still leading to kill totals. That's been the case ever since we got finished with yesterday. And from every time we checked in with them, this has been a super aggressive team. They've always been looking for fights, for the most part, always been taking fights too. So that definitely aligns well with their stat totals here. We're getting into it though, folks. Obviously, we're going to follow major pushers again as they are the current champions from the previous matchup, but delicately so here as they're going to need to find a heck of a lot more than what they got in that last game if they want to make the impact necessary to push them into the top five. And of course, the discussion of who is going to be in that top five is really open at this point with so many teams just so close to each other. We can't state that enough. We can't make the impact of that enough. Just how much this is coming down to the wire here. Major Pusher is obviously going to take control of this one pretty much for free. Not going to have any contestation on the inside of their natural landing zone here. That's going to be more so in the areas we've already been seeing it, say, over towards uh, Skyhook primarily with a couple other areas also potentially being hot zones. Yeah, the leaderboard's really looking like, uh, you know, the hit song from the 2000s, Wide Open Spaces, you know, like, there's just so much room to work with right now, and really, it's anybody's game, and really, coming down to the last two matches, that's exactly what we want out of this. We don't want someone that just has such a far-stretched lead that nobody can possibly touch them. We decided the victor two matches ago. Like, we don't want that. We want exactly where we sit right now. A knife's edge, where anything could possibly happen at any moment in time. These early engagements even matter so to the overarching story of our leaderboard. And we can see things starting to go down inside of Skyhook once again. But it's not Skyhook as of right now. Yes, there's some shots being sent back and forth, but Countdown seems to be the fray that we need to pay attention to as we hop on board with OCN. OCN, of course, bottom of the pack right now, been struggling to make that impact. We'll see, of course, if they're still in oh. fighting shape for this. They'll be able to get the door cut off at minimum here. Might I just Raj pick, yeah. <laughs> Coming in for these guys here is, like we said, they're towards the bottom of the leaderboard right now. So I think just having some fun in these last few games, trying to see what they can do more than anything else. But T-Rex already moving into the inside of their building here and wiping them out pretty quickly. How many squads have we seen go to Countdown? Separate squads, mind you. Go to Countdown and kill OCN as the start. That, that, I think that's like the fourth or fifth time that we've seen that yeah, happen. Know. And now Solo Q goes in some hot water as well as Shiv taking so much damage, trying to catch up to his, uh, well, his twin brother, but his twin seems to be better in the engagement. But oh no, it's not the other one's Bloodhound either, as Avangard doesn't even have one. So they'll take down both of the Bloodhounds and send them both off to whatever they pray for. Avangard now seemingly ahead inside of the KPs. They're trying their damnedest to stay alive simply because of how that leaderboard is starting to break down. <laughs> yeah, kicking solo queue goats, constantly trying to knock each other out of this game, and that is they going to continue. They each other, man. I yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's funny because it started like like tit for tat, like <laughs> like mm -hmm. like one would invade the other. I think I think Kick was the one that started it. They jumped on their uh, area first, but for the most part, solo queue goats respected. Then solo queue goats came back a couple games ago, tried it again, and ever since then, they have been fighting each other at the beginning of every single round because they are just mad at each other, as far as I can tell, and they want to fight for full control of Skyhook, which is even. Which is funny because I think there's actually a third squad somewhere in Skyhook that's just been avoiding this every single time. Yeah, it seems that they always have a squad that lands a little bit more north than the rest of them do. And they're trying to take an engagement right around like that bottom left area of Skyhook. Mostly that big building that we've been seeing. Uh, a lot of combat inside of. But either way, though, uh, getting some updates on uh, one of our new fan favorites, more than likely, new esports, is they've been uh, having quite the showing so far today and looking to make uh, well, that continue on as they've got quite a few squads currently around, then Gambit across the way, as well as Roger Bogger. The rest of his squad still remaining quite close here uh, to the squad. Uh, still have Gambit possibly on an entry at a moment's notice, but I don't necessarily know that if new esports are aware of the squad that's currently below them as well. Well, now they are. 
Roger Bodger taking quite a bit of damage as he works his way in there, losing nearly all of his shields. You could almost say the same thing for post-kill also, as the rest of Newt moves in behind that portal. Roger, of course, gets the initiation off of that one. EMP gonna go out from New, but I don't think it finds much impact ultimately. Good portal positioning, by the way. Great way to block off extra players trying to work their way up, and obviously the Octane uh, mines doing doubly so to make sure that no one encroaches on their space here. Drone goes up for that intel once again, but unfortunately not going to be able to find much except for the one to two players sitting on the rooftop. So once again, not a whole lot that new esports can realistically do at this point, but we are going to see a new element added to it. Oh no, a danger portal opens up right in the middle of their area of this building. I don't believe anyone from Gambit is going to take it this early though. Obviously we've got those mines on the ground that is not going to make for it advantageous engagement. They have to try to find some other way to jump onto the squad. Uh, Parkstar might be a good way to start it. Yeah, it could possibly be. At least get some damage dealt to those shields and a possible break if they are close enough. But either way, Gambit playing this one pretty close to the chest, obviously with how things have been uh, well going for them today. It's been a pretty slow upswing, but as of right now, they're looking to bring it back inside of these last two matches. Get another good sonar blast here. Get recon on what's going on inside of the room. EMP out to deal some damage to them, and I'll force Gambit back yet again. Let's use the cells to get these shields filled back up before the re-engage. Is a pretty good waste of utility with that EMP. But and obviously forcing Gambit back off of this opposing squad. So it works out the way that they want it to. But the only issue now is that new esports still currently locked inside of this room. Yes, they were able to use the EMP to back off Gambit, but still looks like a defensive position for them as of right now. But they shouldn't fret all too much with that. They still have Crypto to get some good info on the outside as well as Caustic with his barrels to be able to deal with a lot of the entries coming in. But now as we jump on board with Yappers, they're inside of a shield cleaning up third impact and they'll be able to accomplish that task as they'll take over the kill lead as well. Now we're NJ doing some nice job there, mopping things up for that squad. NCD in the meantime looking for a quick little recovery to be able to jump back in. It's the current opponents. A little confirmation on who they're up against just as of yet here, but we'll hopefully see that in a second when one of them goes down. As this is definitely going to be a big push coming in from NCD. One of these players already taken out. It is Rubik going down there. So that is going to mean that they are currently up against Yappers, I believe. Yep, that is the case. And while we will see the trade come out against the Octane, leading to the elimination of that, or the knock on that player, a uh, quick res comes because they do have the Gimme Shield available. No way for Yappers to immediately re-aggress onto that because they're not only dealing with the pressure from up on top, but inside of the train tunnel, you can see there is a third element here as we are going to see Nessie working their way into this part of the map too. Well... Things have all of a sudden drawn to a standstill here as it's a staring contest currently for Adoli and his friends. Don't necessarily want to step forward and you can't exactly blame them as it appears that we have a pair of our older friends here up inside of combat. But no, it's actually not them. It's going to be new esports back inside of their building and Gambit finally get it done. It's going to cost them heavily though as they won't only lose Hardecki but also... Leon down for the count. They'll need to deliver those beacons to try and get their friends back up and back into battle. Remember, these last two matches mean the absolute most for Gambit right now. And given the circumstances of the circle, this is going to be quite the risky play with the amount of people rotating. So many people building up towards this here is obviously sorting factories starting to become a little bit crowded overall here. But with it being oh. in so close to the circle, we are also going to see clone squad. That being croissant pushed out of their position here. Major pushers, of course, fending it oh, off from no. the other end. So croissant gonna have to try and find another way around. What's up? Uh, branches was disconnected there for just a oh, second, back, but they though. ended up yeah. getting him back in. So we're, we're good to go. I, I was really worried there for a split second just because we, you know, they've been doing so good, John. I just want to see him keep playing. So that is going to be major pushers back to full strength here with their third player quickly reconnecting. Thanks so much for that capability. And now we're going to have to see what else Croissant will try to do to rotate back around here. In the meantime, Gambit might be coming back here as they've been able to find not only the two cards they need to get themselves back in the banners, that is, uh, but Artico makes an easy path over towards Lava City where they are going to be able to use the Res Beacon here and bring back both Hardecki and Leogri into the fight. All right, we're well, finally getting an update as to what's happening with this circle. And while well, the 
circle that we currently have centralizing itself around harvester and sorting factory and as we get that next step yes it is definitely going to be a sorting factory circle as well some pretty solid control for a lot of these squads already knowing as to how this is going to break down alliance playing the outskirts once again and uh we're pretty used to this position for them they really like to gatekeep these areas and try and get kp through that means so or through those means excuse me either way though back on board with gambit now is they're back at full strength as hardecki as well as leon fly back into the map but the only thing now is they not only need to get helmets and shields yet again but they also need to get some weapons and not just any weapons some weapons that can actually fight up against these other fully kitted squads we'll see if they're going to be able to do that Primarily working with just white shields right now. Artico's been able to navigate himself towards a blue pickup at least, but keep in mind, not really any cells or batteries going to be usable here for Gambit. They're actually heading right back to the same position they just got wiped out from as well. So let's be cautious about that, especially if we're, we're going to try and retake the same exact position. But as we shift away from that, over to GYD, specifically the D in that GYD, it's pushed forward here and is looking to hold off any of the swings from the other squad they're currently up against here. Uh, other teammates also trying to group up with them here on the outside, but definitely not committing to that building as of yet. They know that a rotation is coming up around the corner here. They'll have to make a run towards that next circle, and this is not going to be the position that'll be close enough to it. So over towards Ethics now, Let's take a look at them. They're also on the hunt currently trying to isolate down one squad and more importantly, move quickly in the process of that in order to get this early position Make sure they're not going to be cut off by anyone as they round the corner here. They'll be safe in doing so, but as soon as they wrap to the outside of this, that's when they'll more than likely run into issues. I think they just realized on sound, but also hearing that other squad in the distance too, I think they are getting prepared for them in the event they also need to crunch this direction. So Yoko and the rest of this team going to play for the cutoff, it looks like. And this is going to be ethics, which we've uh, seen a lot of back and forth from uh, throughout this tournament. Uh, definitely a better showing as of today. They were a pretty low finishing squad yesterday, but rebounding, able to get their first win today as well, and starting to try and fight for that money, but still a long road ahead of them. Obviously not wanting to give it up inside of our an ultimate match here. Second to last as we hop back on board with NCD. Badoli staying up top as uh, doesn't want to try and take any heat inside of this fray just yet. It's going to be Dolphin that hops in initially, but needs to get these shields back up. Make it to where this engagement won't go so south so quickly. But the other problem being that they don't necessarily have the greatest shields to try and fight with. Dolphin will have to use a pad to get back up top, but it's graceful. And the rest of the squad currently barreling down on top of them, but it looks to be ethics to possibly join in very soon. Yeah, ethics swinging in very quickly here. They do find an open path in order to get themselves in the sorting facility itself. They'll have to be cautious, though, because Nessie is on their backside, probably going to take the same path they did. They were aware of them previously, so there's no reason why they wouldn't have someone assigned to watch that flank in the event as they decide to push out from that direction some point soon. But obviously being careful of the play from NCD on the inside of the Circle Tower as well to make sure they don't get cut off by both of those squads and obviously lead to a premature death for the team inside of this game. Only five squads have gone down. You can feel the tension here as we're getting towards the end of the run in the Grand Finals here. So many of these squads need to make an impact, and more importantly, need to make the impact in the late games to capitalize upon not only KPs, but placement points also. That means that things have gone a little bit more quiet, specifically on the inside of this game, with those teams prioritizing the placement slightly over the kills. That's not to say we haven't had any fights, though. Gambit specifically has had their fair share. In fact, they've been nearly wiped and then rebounded to revive their two teammates and then go back to the same exact position they were just playing into. NCD, though, pushing up to the second level of the main facility on the inside of sorting here. Now needing to play against the roof team, though. That's going to be where the issues will start for them. Are you sure that it's uh, the second level? Because that wall says level three. I don't know if you exactly have the schematics for this building, sir. So, you know, you know, bad caster. How dare you? I, I can't believe it. Either way. In my head uh, cannon. It's the second level. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, that, they actually just watch it. Watch. They've actually just put on like the wrong sticker on the wall or something like that. It'd be actually just so comical. Either way, though, we're back on board with Nessie as they're continuing to try and hold down this tunnel. And they've done a bang up job of doing so so far. They don't necessarily need to try and push themselves forward as they are playing right on the uh, well entry point to this circle. We can also see 
Avangard doing a very, very similar hold across the way. Alliance with the only oversight into this building as well. T-Rex possibly in an engagement soon with them. We also have Unrated in this area as well. This seems to be the time for a lot of these top squads to finally duke it out. No one wanting to be the first to push, though, because they realize how much the tension has boiled down to this final zone right here inside of sorting. A real shame if the circle started to drift away from this point, but I think that's for the most part out of the cards here. As you can see, none of our top contenders as of yet have been fully eliminated, so everybody vying for first place still in play. Aside from that, Croissant has lost two to three of their players with one straggler hiding out somewhere in the midst of this. Other than that, every single squad of the 15 still in the game, still at a full three count here. So you are oh, in well. for some explosive action once these squads are forced into each other over the next circle or two. And we can see that lone player now. It's very much Observer. It's going to be clone from Croissant that's hiding out on the edge of the circle currently. Yeah, he might be hoping that name was actually true because I'm sure he wish he had two of him right now. Uh, <laughs> well, going to be down to the 1v, whatever you want to say. 1v42 if you actually want to put it into proper uh, you know, context there. But either way, uh, it's just going to be the hiding game for them as they're trying to scavenge for placement points or a possible straggling KP uh, anywhere across this last handful of zones. But we've gotten down quite drastically inside of these circles. The current circle holding everyone with inside of Sorting Factory, but it's going to be a forceful move quite soon that's going to force everyone to evacuate the area and be forced to more of a northwest circle here in a couple of moments. GYD with some fantastic engagement so far. Obviously not having the Gibby shield to play with. This is going to be quite damning if it goes south and it looks to have went south for the D inside of that lineup. Dell going to get picked back up while luckily enough, the, the Gibraltar, excuse me, still having that shield. And Yuki playing so very well in close quarters with the Evo will get the down necessary, but no, Alliance spring to action as they start to deal some serious damage to GYD. Alliance ready to finish off the remaining stragglers on the squad down below, but they are also being careful. As you can see, they've kept Vice up on a high ground position, only using this portal to swing in and get aggressive. They do notice that there's another player on high ground against their current position, so they are going to back away from that to make sure they don't end up overcommitting. Like uh -oh. I said, right now, placements matter so much, at least until we get down to that top 10 or top 5 here. So teams are not necessarily getting incredibly frag hungry right now, just because that top of the pack group is looking secure a solid lead coming out of this game with the standings being so close if only one of those teams nets like a 20 plus point game here they are going to shoot in front of the rest of the pack here and for the most part have a secured scoreline but it's not looking like it's going to be the case with so many of these teams making it so deep in you got to give credit to gyd here by the way they've been surviving an onslaught for the last two to three minutes now a good two to three squads trying to take them out and no one has been able to do it despite multiple members of this team going down and pressure from the circle still broiling in. This could be the end of them, though, as they've got to make a big move here. NCD already trying to catch them off, but NCD also in the process of moving through Sorting Facility. They're right in the middle of it right now due to some good hops coming off the jump pad from Dolphin. But are they safe? That's the question, and it doesn't look like it. They've got scans coming on them, a lot of pressure broiling out. You've got an enemy Gibby Shield just a couple feet away, and they need to get aggressive upon it. So much cover to work with, but NCD out in open water right now and dealing some serious damage to the horizon up top, but definitely don't have the high ground when it comes down to it. This crane position could mean their demise if the damage is properly dealt. Drone detection now for NCD as, well, Hellfire starts to rain down upon them, and you can see how Sorting Factory is starting to play out. There's so many squads around this area. The last update we got was 13 squads currently still alive, and they're mostly centralized around the entirety of Sorting Factory. As, as soon as this next circle pops off in 57 seconds, uh, I can't even tell you what's about to happen. There's about to be some insane things going on amongst these squads. They're still sending shots back and forth, just trying to deal some damage uh, and really drain down the mats of these opposing squads. But as of right now, Alliance with a pretty strong position given the circumstances. I'm just going to continue to move down on the circle, though, and more importantly, the safety of the current positions for the large majority of the lobby is going to fade away as that next circle gets ready to close in at any moment here. We've got so much building up here, and it's all going to blow up in a second. Another powder keg for us to see... 
Oh, out before us. Avangard, as you can see there on the corner, still in this fight as well. Finally, a game where so much of the top pack has been able to make it through to this late game stage and now needs to make the impact inside of the fights themselves in order to make up the difference needed to get them on top of the overall scoreboard. We see Nessie, Mady specifically being forced into the open here. Also being chased by another player, Mady just trying to stay alive specifically for Nessie and keep that squad in contention here. And they're not the only ones oh, fighting man. off a push right now here. We can oh, see Badoli man. and the rest of NCD being forced into the next fight. Here we go, folks. Defensive bombardment going down and it's doing a lot of damage. CMK suffering the worst from it right now as far as we can tell as they're going to lose their own Gibby. That's Sanya going down. We'll switch real quickly over to Ethics now and watch them. Air has been able to escape the onslaught at range, but his teammates are not... They've had to reshield very quickly. We can see Cray getting hit with an Arc Star, going down to that now as Ethics pushed to the inside of this one. Alliance also losing two of their players and now the entire squad. So many squads getting wiped over just a few moments. Sonya getting bled out there. That means that I believe CMK is also out of the fight now here too. T-Rex with an interior to play with, now feeling safe. They're gonna push out down another member coming in. But I believe that's Croissant there as PKMK ends up getting taken down and the teams continue to devolve. We're up to the top seven here now, and T-Rex still has this strong position to play from an interior part of a building. Well, the theater of war is Sorting Factory, and what a war it is as it continues through the EMP, dealing quite a bit of damage to T-Rex, but they're immediately surging forward. Able to secure that KP. Huge kills there, and as you said, Frag's coming through. Lots of death boxes down here for T-Rex to possibly muster some mats to assist with these last six squads, but it's not going to be an even six squads either, as we only have 14 people up and alive. Some solid positioning here for a handful of these squads, but most notably for AVG as well as T-Rex down below this building currently. They'll be able to get back up on top of those mats like we were talking about before, but looks like we also have Totem that could possibly win this out as well. On average, only about two and a half players alive per squad right now here. So you are definitely going to be seeing some stragglers out and about. I believe Nessie might be one of those reply totem feeling strong, though, with this upper interior position here has an angle onto the push coming in from Avantgarde and the remaining players from Nessie also. So great positioning here for these players. They just have to be careful not to get caught up by T-Rex, who's sitting directly under them, watching out for this play. Nessie, as I correct myself, they're actually at full strength here as they've made a push forward towards the inside, but they still have to deal with T-Rex and the others. They'll see that there's a squad down below. I believe that's Avantgarde that's going to be fending them off and potentially lurking in late against them. And in fact, it is. You can see Clone still hiding out also there for Croissant down in the midst of just the edge of that circle. He's been able to survive for so long, but might have finally met his match against AVG. EMP going to go out. That's going to seriously slow oh, the T-Rex oh. busters. They're now in the open. Reply Totem dives into this fight. Nasty's also going to get down and dirty into the action as well, as we'll see our first squad get eliminated. T-Rex now out of this fight into a top four. Numbers continue to go down. Nasty seems to be controlling things for now, but they've got the extra pressure coming in from Avantgarde and whoever might be left out of this chaos here now. Wraith is down. Looks like two players down. In fact, is Avantgarde coming in for the cleanup here into a top two position now as they've been able to wipe out one of the last squads and Avantgarde clean it up as they take the big points at the end of game 15. No one expecting Avangard at the base of the hill, John, and they just simply rotate up and wipe out all of the squads fighting inside of this tight little knit group. And on top of that, I believe Avangard was also the one to EMP the fight as well, mm -hmm. which made it to where, like, we, we were talking about powder cakes, right? That was a dynamite stick right there. That was insanity. <laughs> just, uh, just everyone just immediately at each other's throats once they realized the amount of damage that had been caused to both of their squads. They needed to try and settle it as quickly as possible and get back into the materials, try and get some shields built back up before the other squad engage. But Avangard just too clean on the entry and able to take out every single one of those members inside of those two squads. An amazing engagement from them and an even greater map overall. I mean, it's like you said, they were in that little canyon down behind the majority of the players as well. They had arguably the worst position out yes. of every team still in that fight. But because everybody just dogpiled on the final engagement, nobody was paying attention to them in that little ditch they were hiding at. So they were given free reign to run out from it. And thankfully, because they were the last players to move into that fight, they just got the end of the scrap. And for the most part, they had the least damage done to them. They had the least, you know, they had that element of surprise to a certain extent. Nessie knew they were there, but no one else did. 
So as a result of that, they come in for the cleanup. They take down two additional squads at the end of the game, and they are going to be your champions at the end of match number 15. We have one game left, ladies and gentlemen, to try and decide our winners, but obviously we need to update the scores and all that as well. So we will take a short break. When we come back, we'll have those updated scores for you folks and be dropping in for the last time here in the European Finals. And for the last time today, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to our Master Spring event here at the GLL. It's for Europe, of course. $15,000 is on the line for our first place team, in addition to another 15K for second through fifth place. $30,000 overall up for grabs here. And we're about to find out who's taking home the lion's share of that prize pool. Avantgarde taking that most recent game and absolutely getting quite a few KPs more than likely means that they are now at the top of the leaderboard. We'll obviously get that confirmed when we have the leaderboard itself, which, hey, look at that, right on cue, coming up right in front of us now. They take the lead there, but it's a delicate one. As you'll see, only 18 points. Nessie as well, getting 16. Reply Totem, also close at 13, as they are in contention for our top position there. You also saw CMK make it pretty far into it, but only netting themselves four points, unfortunately, because of two placement points and 2kp, so that's not going to make much of a difference when compared to Nessie and Avangard's gains, meaning that it's ultimately coming down to those two, and if anyone else sitting below those two can make up the difference. Let's take a look and see where our overall scores are here as well. Yep, just as we expected, Avangard is now leading, but quite delicately, if they fall off outright in this game, and the same can be said for any of our top contenders, and someone else is able to overtake them, that is a very real possibility that they swing right from as far down as even fifth or sixth place all the way up to first. Yeah, if we're going to be as apparently realistic as we can possibly be, it's probably down to CMK to really rebound here. Reply Totem and Underrated would have to have a hell of a match, as well as Nessie, Gambit, and Avangard would all have to end up faltering. Uh, every, more than likely at the beginning, really can't get any KPs either, because when it comes down to Underrated, that's a 24-point difference. That's a really, really steep mountain to climb inside mm -hmm. of one game, but we're not saying it's completely undoable. We've seen throughout the day a lot of these squads fall early on and match 16 could be the big difference maker for a lot of these like fifth to seventh place teams all right so we're going to find out if that'll be the case uh it's also important to note at this point because the point totals are so close that in the event any teams end up in a tie i just want to go over the tiebreaker rules real quick for you guys the first stat line that will define who wins those tiebreakers is going to be the team's best performing match based on total match points. So basically, the, the total, the team's best overall game out of the 16 that they've played, those will be directly compared against each other, and whoever has the better one there will end up taking the higher placement. There are about five or six other ways to determine it if they're still tied at that point as well. But we don't need to go into too much detail on that, uh, unless it obviously proves necessary after this game. Well, Avangard currently top of the leaderboard and not something that we necessarily thought was going to happen. Uh, well, throughout the day today, I mean, yesterday really just a showing of Nessie and Gambit and their domination across the entirety of those matches and just extremely solid showings, really only seen Avangard inside of kill participation. And well, we've been seeing a lot of that from them as they are still holding that crown and holding it high. But the big difference being in first place now simply because of those KPs. Yeah, the KP is making the big difference here. Obviously, the two wins helping them out there also, tying it up with Gambit, Nessie, and quite a few of the other teams that have been able to negotiate for two wins inside of the games we've played so far. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The last dropship is out on the map. It's in the world's edge. One final time, one final game, one final opportunity for Avantgarde and the rest of our top contenders to try and earn points and secure a first place victory, which will come with $15,000 if they're able to succeed in gaining it. Let's go into the match and see who's going to take the cake. And this is where the rubber hits the road, folks. This is it for a lot of these squads. This has to be perfect gameplay from quite a few of these teams if they want a chance at that $15,000. And we're starting off with our point leader right now, Avangard, as they'll begin looting inside of what I believe is Fragment as of right now. So as well, the beginnings start to... Oh, is, is this indeed Skyhook? It is indeed yeah. Skyhook. I, I wasn't able to see the uh, little circle there on the mini-map that is usually the uh, telltale sign of 
Skyhook. So apologies on that one, folks. Don't have too much time on World's Edge as opposed to everything else. This is sadly the least amount of time I've spent on a single map in all of Apex. Yeah, I mean, we haven't been able to play it. So <laughs> Yeah, which is also the rough thing. We've just been playing so much Olympus, man. You can't queue for this right now, which makes it a little difficult sometimes, but I'm hopefully, hopefully you guys can bear with us as we've been simply just learning the map or more me, notably, uh, from just simply watching and participating. It's been an amazing, amazing experience across LATAM as well as EU and uh, we expect that to not change up inside of this last match here is well the drops are looking quite similar to what we saw throughout all of today definitely gonna be the case just like that that also means we were going to see quite a bit of contestant early on towards skyhook and we can already see a couple of those teams jumping into it it's not even just kick as well as the solo cube goats anymore there are even more squads that have jumped into the chaos here as well that you can see i believe that is uh that is ocn sitting over there at the top left that's just trying to cause trouble at this point more than anything else because unfortunately like we talked about them getting the last game they're kind of sitting at the bottom of the pack right now so they're just in this one to try and mess up other people's days more than anything else so you do have uh, Bolit kind of just point guarding to make sure that the solo queue goats don't try to work their way in towards trials. But for the time being, they're actually taking a pretty passive approach because they were forced out of their last landing zone in that previous game, as we saw all over a countdown. Well, these circles really favoring the top right hand side of the map so far today. This is going to be our third one, uh, although this one going to be quite different from the other two. The other two really favoring uh, well, the. Uh, large mountain, we'll just say, in between uh, uh, Skyhook as well as Refinery and Epicenter, that area right there. But this one going more up towards Refinery, which could obviously lead to some different problems for these teams. Is it, won't, it will no longer be the rotation away from Refinery. It will actually be the rotation towards that. So we'll have to see how that goes. But before we even get there, already have some action going down inside of Skyhook. It's the squad that we flew in with, Avangard, who currently might have some spoils being played onto them. Avangard obviously trying to play this very, very cautiously. They know they have the point advantage right now. They just need to not go down early, and they will more than likely have the security they need oh. in order to leverage a win. But oh, no, there's no way that Avangard are going to go out of squad 20 here. They're able to turn the fight around slightly, but no, losing two of them. Everything falls to Defaust now. He's got to hold on here. Oh. If he goes down, there's an open field for first place, oh. potentially. Defaust trying oh. to survive, but no! Oh my goodness, Avangard, after clutching the last game, are the first knocked out. They're also our current point lead meaning that everyone within range of them has a full opportunity to overtake now. Play that funky music disco, boys, because they <laughs> knock them clean out of the running, John. Nessie has an opportunity to not only claim first place, but take away 15 grand away from Avangard. They'll be knocked on down the line, and it could be even worse if we see some amazing gameplay from Gambit. It's all left up into the air for them. What is going to happen to Avangard in the future? What we'll have to see as we have yet another squad eliminated, and this is happening fast and furious right now. Four squads already eliminated before the first ring can even close. I mean, heck, even CMK might even be in the running now when you consider... Wow if they're able to get enough of a point gap when compared to the other contenders that are still gonna try and make it into the top dogs here inside of this game. So, so many teams can still potentially win this tournament now. And I mean, to be completely fair, you could still also end up seeing Avant Guard win this should all of those other teams go down early, but that's incredibly unlikely. So more than likely, you're gonna be looking at Nessie or another squad taking the top position at the end of this game. We just have no idea which team that's going to be. Everything comes down to this final map. Man, I am tickled pink about this situation. This is absolute insanity. I, I don't think that there's a better way to play out some competitive Apex than having the leader in the very last match end up losing and have to sit on the bench and watch to see what is going to happen. As we finally get the update here, Avangard, Kick, Yappers, as well as... Uh, oh. GYD. GYD. Oh, that is GYD. I was waiting for my uh, stream to clear up there just before I said that. But yeah, that is actually going to be GYD eliminated as well. And they've been one of our most aggressive squads throughout the day. But oh no, Disco Boys with yet another engagement. But who's it going to be? It's going to be Tanche going down here. But the rest of the squad not apparently in behind him. I believe that was going to be a straggler. So Disco Boys going to be making it away with yet another KP. I think that's a loss of OCN as the team that we just saw getting knocked out there. So... Not going to, unfortunately, lose out on much there for OCN. As like we said, they aren't in much competition at this point in the 
game anyway. But for NCD, they're still in it. They could still potentially push to be in the money at a minimum here, NCD, as they're floating around the top 10, if my memory serves me correctly. So if they're able to have a good game here, definitely not going to be able to vie for winning position, but can still at least try to go for top five where the prize pool is available. That's and also that's an important it, point here. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Just to mention, that's also an important point for quite a few of our teams that are currently outside of the top five here, since we're still even close beyond that. Teams still try to fight to get inside of at least prize pool positioning here if they're able to push themselves that far. Yeah, exactly. The story isn't all about Avangard. It's about all of these squads and their opportunity to get into the money because that's truly what matters when it comes down to this tournament. We want to see these guys try and vie for a top five finish. And that's exactly what we're going to get, John. This has no, there's no sense in this slowing down at this moment in time. We've already lost five squads. And of course, we're going to hop right back into some fantastic stuff going on for T-Rex. They're in yet another fight here. And they've been just very scrappy today, able to find quite a few KPs, but this has also been kind of a dual-edged sword here as they've uh, also been faltering simply because of third parties and some other unfortunate circumstances happening for this squad but they have some pretty solid positioning as of right now uh, currently at the top of the literal skyhook t-rex continuing to hold on to this position though quite a powerful one for this early on in the game but Going to have to leave it sooner rather than later, and the Disco Boys are also sitting directly below them. Neither team wants to be the first to jump down here, so they are going to continue to maintain these positions. I believe T-Rex is also making the same decision since they're aware of the fact that Disco Boys are down here, but there we go. Just grouping up, it, it seems, for the Disco Boys. They needed that jump pad to make the gap, get across here, and try not to lose the entire squad. Crema still going to be knocked down in the process here. Here comes the follow-up from the rest of T-Rex as they're going to try to get aggressive upon the Disco Boys here. MPE looking to hold it off to the best of his own capabilities, and Caesar may have fended them off in a flight direction, but they're still going to try to get aggressive as they push up towards the building where Disco Boys are hiding out now. There's truly no way in hell that Disco Boys of all squads are going to play spoils to multiple top 10 teams right now, but it seemed to be the case. Is Sirius able to down one immediately? Some Arc Stars in to deal extra damage. They down the second one that's the third and i believe five disco boys take it to t-rex and they still have rama down outside but no he's finally dusted by i believe a possible third party coming in it's excuse me ring, rama uh getting downed and yeah it's gonna be kearney that ends up picking up that frag so it takes him out of the play right there either way we'll switch over to a new pov here as the disco boys try to survive the ring now that they've survived that first fight Croissant getting some pressure sent onto them from the distance, but hold on, the Disco Boys are not done just yet. Oh. They still have to go in, and Arkstar connects onto MP. He knows he's going to take some serious heat in a second. Needed to finish off Kearney, getting the job done there at least. As now we're going to see Sirius pick up the kill leader crown as well here. Four for him. I believe it's seven KPs already in this team's pocket in this game, as they're going to look for more than that. Update on the scoreboard. It is indeed OCN and T-Rex that have been knocked out most recently, but no other squads beside that going down fully as of yet. Disco Boys, also the only team to have lost a player since the last time we checked in on the tracker. Well, Avangard more than likely praying to the Disco Boys to take out as many squads as possible inside of that top 10 because you know damn good and well they want that first place spot and right now obviously have to sit and wait to see how this will turn out but well Refinery looking to be the battleground as we were expecting. Quite a few squads already making their way in. Most notably, as of today's matches, new esports already with some pretty safe ground inside of this area. So I'll have some outliers here and a possible engagement going on here for, I believe, solo queue goats as they're chasing down this uh, squad with two stragglers. If they're working on taking down the Disco Boys here as Disco Boys still sit on the inside of a building just on the outskirts of Skyhook. Away from that, though, all the squads starting to build up over towards Refinery, the northeast side of the map. See MPE and Sirius ready for the challenge of solo queue goats, but they've had the same exact situation we put before them once already when they were moving from Skyhook. They don't want to be the first ones to move here. Circle's still doing minimal damage. They've got a jump pad to play with, though, so they think it's safe, and the Arc star supporting to make sure no one from the solo queue goats rips them apart from the balcony. They hop away and start running towards the circle. Extremely smart stuff there, especially with that arc star coming in that you uh, so kindly pointed out. Fantastic reposition there from them. So the disco boys live to dance another day. Uh, we can put it that way there. Either way, uh, refinery still looking to be an absolute war zone when it comes down to it. We have still quite a few squads that need to make their way in, but we can already see uh, there's quite a few squads that have already worked their way inside and taken control of some ground. 
currently have a couple of members still out towards epicenter as well it could be holding on to that for quite some time but it looks like they're already seemingly wanting to move on this second circle and some more aggressive things as we hop on board with croissant arc star down as they're trying to dip dash and dodge back and forth in between this Gibraltar shield. A nice pop here for NCD of the Beast of the Hunt as Nag's starting to deal some serious damage now, but it's more of a reposition and trying to get some intel. Haven't been able to find the down just yet. Good scan here. Not going to take the TP. Instead, would rather just play the roof and more than likely a better position for them overall anyways. So many teams already working their way into it. We do have NCD in position in the circle already. Nessie on the border in the distance as well. But CMK also in the midst of this. As you can see, under one of the refinery stacks themselves, they hold a pretty strong position. They're not going to be the only ones. New esports in the midst of this one and the side building on the right side of the screen. We've got third impact on the outskirts of refinery here too. A lot of teams taking up positions. Where's the rest of our top positions? That's what we need to know right now. Reply Totem, Alliance, and Gambit, all within spitting distance of each other right now. And one of those fights is going to start here. Alliance jumping on to Reply Totem. They want to pick up some kills here. Well, spitting distance is fighting distance, and usually they go hand in hand as well, John, as it's the aggressive play right now from Alliance. They're literally fighting through this defensive bombardment to get these KPs, and oh, Totem go down for the count after IPN cleans it up with the Spitfire, but this looks to be possibly the fuse being lit is third impact, now looking to make an impact on this fight. Not necessarily going to be the third one, though, as it seems to be the second entry here. Alliance starting to fight back though as they do indeed have some superior firepower some amazing flatline plays right now from hack as he's got that anvil receiver as well dealing serious damage at range right now Hank is trying to see if he can capitalize more upon this one obviously with the anvil receiver getting some serious damage on that flatline here from range even with just the single taps going out as you guys have just saw for yourself Ooh, charge at rifle. the same time yeah charge rifle gonna be even more dangerous in range so <laughs> Needs to get himself behind cover pretty quickly, as does the rest of Alliance. The angle is not going to work for them. They've actually oh. got to wrap around. But here oh. comes Dazo and Horizon from Underrated as well. They're going to try to get aggressive. Dazo oh. already taking out one of the Alliance members, but at the same time, they return the favor in kind, trying to knock them out. We're going to see the silence go on top of these guys, as we'll see the death protection giving these guys, well, the protection they need to stay alive in the engagement. An Underrated run over Alliance, taking them out of the play and opening up a PK pickup for one of these members of the team and not only a pk pickup but taking out one of our runners that could have possibly gotten into the top five here underrated trying to make the play and yep <laughs> yes indeed my friend we have to finish out the day how we started and that means constant ultimate accelerance to make it to where they can have that death totem back i mean guys we talk about life insurance you know eventually everybody does inside of life but when it comes down to it revenant's probably got the best insurance policy out of all of us Right, just call it death protection as well so <laughs> all state has nothing on this that's all i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to see them continue to move in now that ultimate's not ready to go just as of yet they've got about 10 more seconds until they're going to be able to utilize that but regardless they've been forced into an engagement here we're going to see the jump up to allow case winning to try to play for some info as well as on the top level there to get some shots off but ultimately just serves as a distraction to allow their two teammates to get behind better coverage and prepare for possibly that ultimate to get brought out when they feel they're ready for the next engagement Capadoli along with the rest of their team sitting up on top of the refinery building as well. That's NCD holding that strong position. Directly below them is Nessie. And across the way, we have another squad as well there trying to fight for points on the inside of this. Reply Totem has since made their way a little bit closer towards the actual stack where you currently have new esports hiding out. The problem is New wants to get a little bit aggressive here. And third oh. impact, you could say the same for them. Ziki catching that push. See if they're going to be able to actually knock anyone here. Ziki being cautious with the aggression himself. Falling back. Portal to retreat if necessary, but for the time being, just holding the front line against the underrated assault. The problem is, underrated have no cover to work with here. Ziki knows they're getting low, so Ziki's going to move forward here as Reply Totem also trying to capitalize on the chaos going on right now. Finish off these players on underrated and get the KPs that go along with it. Who's going to get us? we got so many players shooting in. It is going to be Savage, so Reply Totem takes the points there. The problem is, Savage is now a bird in the sky, and everybody wants to take it home. He's going to get dropped finally by Dezo, who's able to knock him out of the play here. Your Ply Totem sits a little bit weaker here. 
Well, that bird quickly turned to a rock as he falls back to Earth, and quick reality check there as well, as he's going to be one of the last members residing for his squad. Nice save here from Gambit, but more in particular Articchio, as he'll throw down that ultimate and try and save Gambit. They still have to worry about Zeke in the bottom of this building, though. Could rotate up at a moment's notice. It's all of triple impact here, or third impact, excuse me, that are beginning to work this building. They've got some fantastic play from the window up top. Jazaz pop it open the Gibraltar shield and it's the Mastiff now to try and handle Gambit is this the end of Gambit right now and it is third impact take out Gambit they can no longer try and battle for first place quick reshield up for Jazaz as a third party is coming in fast here that arc star cannot be avoided oh no. same for the nade here Jazaz has to get this heal he cannot interrupt it the scans out finally the intel being sent over more importantly finally a whiffed nade oh giving Jazaz some freedom to breathe but it doesn't stay that way for very long and incendiary starts lighting him up yet again goes back to his cells here now as he's trying to get himself back to full HP and fend off the aggression from whichever squad is trying to third party this fight this is truly incredible right now from TI. They've been able to withstand the onslaught from all of these squads, but now it seems to be solo queue goats that are simply just waiting outside the door and seeing what their next move is going to be. Or is it going to be the forward move here from Diff? He's the only one to leave and actually make a forward move. Possibly... A little bit too aggressive here. Yes, he will get read out, but it's not going to be from TI. No, in fact, it's going to be from across the way. We don't even know who he was engaged upon from, but now this is going to force the move from third impact. As the ring gets closer, this makes the house a little bit more complicated to play as it's right on the ring's edge. If they stick around here and too much insight gets taken from these other squads, they're more than likely dead on the next ring move. So they're going to hop to immediately as we hop on board with NCD, still deep inside of Refinery warehouse. NCD continuing to maintain this incredibly strong position, but being very wary of any aggression that may come out from Nessie. Nessie doing the same exact thing just from a top-down perspective here. They know there's another squad that's managed to sneak into the refinery building. This is going to get very chaotic on the inside of this tiny building, or the remnants is left of it anyway, as that final circle starts to close. The next one going to push all the teams outside of this one as well into the open. So this is it. This is going to force the fight out of almost all of the remaining teams in the next 45 seconds when that circle starts to move. Nessie getting revealed again by the squad playing on the low ground right now. Keep in mind, he still have NCD on top of these guys as well. Nessie's been sandwiched. So they need to be so, so cautious about how they make every single move from this point forward. As they're one of the teams in contention and the closest as well to Avangard's score total trying to take first place in this tournament. And this is the last game to do it. Well, 20 seconds remain on this circle and only six teams remain as well. Don't necessarily know all of the teams that we currently have here, but major pushers making it through inside of this last match. Still have Nessie alive as we were talking about before. And as we get the update here, looks like Totem still have a player uh, rolling around here as well. But it looks to be the final circle being not only with inside the refinery warehouse, but outside near one of the stacks as well. So some very solid positioning and great cover for a lot of these squads. This is going to be a multi-tier battle really about that high ground and who is going to be engaging first with these many people left alive it is indeed anybody's game it just decides on how this is going to break and who wins these initial battles it's going to be quite difficult to try and find some safe ground once it does go off to try and get some mat use get back those shields and re-engage later on but it seems like things are starting to pop off as this circle begins position. to break Badoli, amazing position on the top of the warehouse he knows where the circle's going as well continues to tag everyone up at emp not going to light him up as he continues to bear down onto this squad it's just so much damage right now for what i believe is nessie locked downstairs Nessie's still on the second floor, in fact, so they're going to be relatively safe. It's a whole other squad getting messed upon here by NCD. We're coming down to the wire here, though. This is already a massive victory for Nessie, as I believe they're the last of the top pack still remaining in the game at this point here. I mean, that they'll more than likely outpace the remaining teams and take the title, but we'll wait for the final score confirmation to be able to get that. The further they can make it, the better their chances are, especially with kill points going into their favor if they weren't able to gather any. Remember, though, Nessie's had a massive rebound inside of this game. They had two other players wiped completely, left their current position that they're still in right now, and then rebounded back to that very same spot upon rezzing. So they are fighting from the backpack, and that's putting it lightly here. New Esports has been able to work their way forward, 
currently post for the most part fighting under ncd's current position and nessie still maintaining a spot slightly below them downstairs that's not the only people in this fight as well we are going to see i think that's a revive beacon going down onto the ground there if they're going to be able to utilize that as well to really throw some chaos into the fight and at minimum add a new kill point for one or two players here depending on how many they're going to be able to revive but on top of that as well see what else they can do for this team if that's even going they to use it. Yep, here we go. They did they it. They did brought it. them back. Who was it? I didn't even see which team had it thrown down, but either was way. New. Was it new? Okay, yeah. well, they're going to bring their players back into the... I'm not really sure what they're going to be able to do, to be honest with you, as there's <laughs> doubt there's really any guns left on the ground for them to pick up, let alone shields and or bats. But either way, the aggression now coming out from Nessie, as we can see on at least JMW, they have no kills right now. They need to possibly make an impact here if they can't guarantee first place, because that fifth place finish, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough for them to be able to make up the difference, considering the impact that some of the other top leading teams have made. Let's uh -huh. find out, though, as everyone's committing to these fights. And NCD coming in off the top rope right now. Will they fully commit to this just yet? It doesn't seem to be the case. They'd much rather wait based on the positioning. Nessie have to make the move first, but I don't believe they were ready for this target-rich environment. Immediately get on the shield. Graceful trying to shield bat as quickly as possible. NCD dedicating everything except the kitchen sink to this battle as all of the damage is starting to come through. Bearing down on top of this opposing squad, it's the EVA to try and deal the shots necessary to deal all of the damage before they can try and engage onto Nessie, who are making it through the fray, but there's so much damage being dealt to them from this circle. They've already lost Matey. NCD right up on top of things with the EVA. Can they get it done? Already dealing the damage back inside of the shield. Have to deal with the Revenant. They'll down him as well as it's them up against a lone member of this squad and NCD stand up inside of our final match and close it out in convincing fashion. But they will not be our victors for the finals. And to be completely honest with you, we don't necessarily know who it's going to be just yet, but what a way to close out this final match. Our current very clearly unofficial analysis of the situation is that we believe Nessie should have been able to overtake avant-garde there and take first place, but we'll okay, wait for the point, point totals to be tallied. Sure. Like I said, that's just our interpretation of it right now here. The admins are already working on tallying up the scores, folks. So as soon as we have those ready, they're going to go up on the screen and we will be able to see who ended up topping out the overall score. Let's take a look at some replays, though, as we had another crazy match. I mean, right from the start, the big story that made this entire game so crazy, for those who missed it, of course, Avant-Garde, the current leader in points, but only by a few getting knocked out right at the beginning of the game. And we had never seen before this moment Disco Boys being not only so aggressive, but also attempting the hot drop. We'd never seen them try and go for something like that so early on. And what a way to do it as well. Just take it to the leaders of the entire EU finals and make things, although they were already complicated, even more so on top of all of the matters that we were already dealing with. And uh, I mean, it just made for such an amazing match to close out our finals here for EU. Extremely excited to see who is going to pick this up. As you said, we're assuming that it's going to be Nessie, but I, I mean, especially for NCD inside of this last match, an amazing game. I forget I forget if Reply Totem were still like in the top five or not. Still, They were. The they had one okay. guy that was like so hanging out under the stack. Well, what, yeah, well, what I mean is for overall points, if they were still like in the top five or not, I, I, I can't oh, remember I from the last time we looked at it, if they were, if they were inside of that pool, they got a lot of kills in that game. And there is that slight possibility that they have enough to also overtake the win bonus or rather the placement bonus that Nessie just got there and allow for them to push forward also. So this is really close depending on where people were at the start of that last game here. And I'm really excited to see the scores. I'm hoping for a surprise. Like we said, both of us are thinking it's Nessie right now, but there's definitely a couple arches of the ways this could go in my head where it might not end up being the case. So we will have to wait and see. Either way, it's not going to be Avangard. I can pretty much guarantee that. Avangard, very unfortunate what happened to them, but it does mean almost certainly that they are going to get bumped out of first place and possibly bumped out of second place too. Man, I love this anime. Just such an amazing story <laughs> so far. It's just, you know, like, I, I got to give it a 10 out of 10, personally speaking. I don't know what we're going to call it. I mean, there's probably some name in relevance to Disco somewhere in here because really, I mean, all of the matches were great, but that Disco third party, that's got to that's be my highlight of all of this. But honestly, uh, coming down to the point where we're, we're really just talking about these teams and talking shop until we get these scores in, guys, we had some amazing squads come out. And honestly, I just want to say I really, really appreciate 
appreciate all of you guys at home uh, bearing with us and really experiencing Apex with John and I. John's done this quite a few times before. This is my second time doing Apex, and it was just such an amazing event to work with, such amazing squads and some immense talent inside of this region. I mean, we had a lot of fun over the past two days here. I mean, just watching Underrated alone has given us giggles so many times yeah. here, just seeing them stack the ultimate accelerants so they can go from fight to fight to fight to fight. And as Stokes mentioned at one point earlier in the broadcast, they weren't even like our top kill team. That was Avangard, at least up until the most recent match. Avangard was leading by a solid like 10 to 20 points overall on kills compared to everybody else. So, so much aggression coming out. It's a treat to see that. And as well, to see it be so successful so many times again with that Revenant play really working out well for Underrated. And honestly, underrated has to be my personal personal favorite from uh, you know this entire list of squads. Like, yes, we saw a lot of action from Gambit and Nessie and all these teams. And I got to give it to Nessie, especially because of the logo. It's just so damn cute, man. Come on. But, uh, <laughs> you know, underrated, they just brought something to the table that is Apex Legends that none of these other squads really brought. And it really was that sheer aggression. Yes, Avangard had the most kills. But if you're going down to just sheer lethality and trying to just get in people's faces, there's no other squad to look for rather than underrated and, and you know they just made things so very fun throughout this entire tournament honestly the uh, gambit storyline was quite interesting too mm -hmm. they seem like a surefire winner looking at the first couple of games that we played out there they were leading by a massive margin at the beginning of this event here with two wins being gained i think it just in the inside of the first four matches we played so they were looking really strong unfortunately started faltering off towards the middle but still always keeping up, probably had to be one of the most consistent teams with regards to placements overall in this event because we were seeing them so, so often inside of that top five fight. Unfortunately, positioning got the better of them more times than not, and they weren't really able to keep up in a lot of respects, but keep in mind, they're still in our contention here Aww. for top dog inside of this matchup. We're going to start, however, with a quick reminder about the point system and the prize pool. $100,000 being given out across all of our regions. We got 30 k for Europe, which means first place today is going home with 15000 Second place goes home with seven k. Third place takes home $4,000. Now, a point system once again. First place gets 12 points. Second place gets nine points. Third place gets seventh. As you can see, kind of goes down from there. These points were so important as there were teams within just under 10 points of each other here. So a couple kills, a couple different placements might have made the difference. It's NCD that tops us out, but the most kills as well. 22 points overall inside of that. Reply Totem picking up 11. At the there, Nessie only able to negotiate five points because while they do finish towards the end of the pack inside of the top three or top four, they don't get any kills because they couldn't be aggressive due to them getting wiped in the early game, having to retreat, res, and come back. So now where does that leave us overall? Oh, Who is going no. to be our champion? Let's find out. It's the Avant Guard! Oh! oh, oh. oh my. still holds the crown even slightly despite the fact that they were literally 20th place in the final game, none of the other teams were able to make enough of a point game. Not even Reply Totem was able to make enough of a point game to be able to outwit Avangard. Nessie falls to second place by just three points. And Avangard, with their earlier match performance, takes the crown, takes first place, and the $15,000 that comes with it. Congrats to our Russian squad of Avangard. An amazing final for them. So amazing, in fact, they didn't even have to play the last game. <laughs> uh, and honestly, that really just boiling down to Nessie not able to procure any kills inside of that last game. If not, I believe they only got one. But either way, the placement points not doing it for them. And you can definitely see from this scoreboard how Avangard were able to negotiate for first place. It was just the kills coming through from them that they were able to stack up throughout all of these two days. And props to NCD as well. Their performance in that final game in game 16 is enough to push them into the top five, putting them in the money, obviously at the low point of it, but still going to get something for their efforts here. And more importantly, something for that final win on game 16 as well. Even the effort from Reply Totem, unfortunately not being enough to push them all the way towards the top as they do end up with uh, quite a bit of a tie there. But as we said, that has uh, tiebreaker rules, which are being resolved. I already explained the first rule set and how that's handled. There's plenty more beyond that as well. So there will be solid placements for all those teams, which ended up with the same point totals overall. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Avant Guard hold on, despite seeming like it was the end for them after getting knocked out in last place in the final game. They still maintain the lead at the end of the day. Stokes, let's get your final thoughts, man. 
Oh man, I'm just happy to be here. That's all I got to say about <laughs> it, brother. I mean, it was just such a good time. I really do appreciate everyone at home that came along on this journey with us. It's been an amazing two days for Apex Legends, especially inside of Europe. I don't think that we could have asked for a better final. So once again, I appreciate all of you guys at home going through uh, this with us and experiencing all of these magical moments. It has been so much fun. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for Europe. We encourage you to stick around, however, as North America is coming up in just a little bit. But for now, if you're not sticking around, we hope you have a good rest of your evening, and we'll see you next time here at the GLL.